Really, I'm not done yet. Let's go. It started with young minds, guiding them towards announcing their potential and achieving their aspirations. His impact extends beyond conventional realms. He has emerged as a prominent leading proficiency trainer, impacting critical skills to hundreds of aspiring professionals and business owners. His teachings empowers them. To advantage. I'm not done now. Ekundayo Oliwa Damnari has established an organization that transcends conventional boundaries. White Up Global serves as a platform for youth empowerment, fostering self discovery, and nurturing a sense of responsibility towards the sustainable development goals. I'm not done. Under his guidance, his innovative initiative encourages young individuals to not only discover their own potentials but also actively contribute to the development of others, creating a ripple effect for echoes far and wide. With a resolute commitment to excellence and empowerment, Ekundayo Oluwada Milare continues to aspire change and amplify the voices of the youth towards driving a brighter and a more empowered tomorrow. Guys, ladies and gentlemen, Join me to welcome Ekundayo Oluwa Damilare PMP. Please, can we send in emojis? Let's tell him welcome. Like, I don't know, I was really wowed by his citation. So let's welcome him, like, massively. Thank you very much. So you're welcome, Mr. Ekundayo Oluwa Damilare. And yes, the stage is yours, sir. Hi, good morning, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Can I get a confirmation if you can hear me? Yes, we can hear you very well, sir. All right. Um, thank you very much for the invite. I'm really honored to be here. And um, in the space of a few minutes, something explosive is about to be shown to you. And I just want to believe that you will make good use of this and um, you will apply everything that you will, you will see. And first of all, I appreciate the leadership of the church for looking to this direction to open young minds to seeing the need to professional development. Because over the time past, there have been complaints that youth are not capable, things are lacking, these kids and the likes. And if you are to make a survey, the skill that the school set is teaching students and what the labor market really requires, it does not match. So, and it's not the fault of the school because the school is performing the function uh, because respective institution have the capacity to entrain what their core values are. So for school, any school that you belong to, class is different and the school is different because the school is made of several components. You have the class system, environmental system, residential system, and um, fellowship, let me just use fellowship system, a spiritual system. So. Many people just go for the academic system. That means the classroom and uh, maybe probably fellowship. And after that, that's all. Only if you look into the direction of what the school entails. And that is one of the reasons why I want to encourage you all beyond the classroom. There are a lot of opportunities in your school that you can maximize. So the ball is in your court. Ensure that you maximize maximally. But, Talking from experience, I, I passed through school and the school passed through me because I enjoyed every opportunity the school has for me. And I have no, I would have regrets. Despite the long years in school, I have no regrets because I am made through the opportunity the school profile to me. So once again, thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much, my host. Uh, the awesome moderation was uh, the amazing. The, my moderator, thank you very much. Eh? Thank you very, very much um, for the introduction. I was thinking myself that I don't know who you are reading about, but all by God's grace, actually, all by God's grace. So let's go to the business of the day. Uh, make it very fast so that you can see what I have to tell you. Just let me know if you can see my screen, please. Can you see my screen? 
Yes, we can see your screen, sir. Oh, good. I just I can, I can join can join with two devices just to be sure. Yes. You can see your screen. Yes, sir. We can see our screen, sir. All right, so if you can see my screen, maybe someone should just let me read what I put down here. Optimizing LinkedIn for career and professional opportunities. Yes. So I want to teach you how to maximize opportunity right while you're in school. And um, while I was in school, a short introduction, um, my name had been said, Uluwadam Larry Kundayo, PMP, APM, Scrum Master and the likes. While I was in school, I was privileged to enjoy a trip to Accra, Ghana for six months. I was in part three precisely. And um, that opportunity changed so many narratives about me. It gave me international exposures. It opened me to meeting global leaders. And since then, I've been better. That's what I can tell you. I've been better. So if you also need to maximize this opportunity, I need you to pay attention to what I'm about to share with you. So let's go about it very quickly. Have you ever asked yourself these questions that um, some people are always getting opportunity whereas others are not? Why some people claim that recruiters are in their inbox every day whereas others barely get a response for even applying for one? Have you ever asked yourself? Some people will tell you that, okay, being a student, I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying that. Why well, some people have not even enjoyed once? If you have asked yourself this question, is it like life is by us or what is really, really happening? I don't even know many of you have a LinkedIn account, or let's talk about if your LinkedIn is optimized. Let me give you a LinkedIn fact. LinkedIn has 810 million members from 200 countries worldwide. 57% of LinkedIn users are identified as men, where 43% are identified as women. Almost 60% of LinkedIn users are between the ages of 25 and 37, meaning they are still young. I want to tell you, there are 58 million companies on LinkedIn with my own. Now, 49 million people use LinkedIn to search for a job every week. Yeah. This is a fact. Millions of jobs are posted monthly. Sometimes about 3 million jobs are posted on LinkedIn every month. Some, some job applications are submitted every second. That is 4,620 applications are sent every minute. 277,200 applications are sent every hour. These are facts. And 6.65 million applications are sent every day. Please, are you, can you hear me? Because I'm already projecting my screen. Yes, we can hear That's you. Very well. But your screen is not changing yet. Oh. What about now? I don't know. Yes, my, I'm yes. Yes, it's changing. I'm seeing. Oh, sorry for that. Please, please get me notified in case I'm disconnected. No problem. So let's go like this. Okay. These are the basic facts about LinkedIn. Now. Seventy percent of people were hired at complain where they had connection. Eighty percent of LinkedIn members want to have 
a mentor or someone to mentor them? I think the screen is not also moving. Sorry. Let me just go like this then. All right. Now, companies with full optimization are five times view more than others. People that use LinkedIn, they are asked more than five skills, half more, 33% visibility to the recruiters. Now, why LinkedIn? Is there any desired opportunity you're looking out for? It will help you build trust. It increases your visibility. It helps your networking proficiency. It's, let me on, let me wind down. Note. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Feeling it. Sorry, please. All right. One of the tests I used to do in a physical conversation like this is, I wanted to do it is that after this talk, I wanted to swap your phone, go to the browser, and press your full name on a Google browser. Whatever pops out is your social media visibility. Now, there's a place of prayer there's a place of action. Many of us pray a lot, but we take less of action. A place of action is where you'll be identified. A place of action is where people will tend to know what you need. You know, there is a place of you communicating what you are passionate about and what you want to do. So this is where LinkedIn can help your proficiency and gives you opportunity. So position yourself as an expert in something and this can be done through LinkedIn it helps you to connect with anybody anytime any day I remember my first conversation with the former president Olusha Gwabasonjo was through LinkedIn my first engagement with John MC Maxwell was through LinkedIn so LinkedIn has given me platform to connect with people that are called the big boys the big men in the society. And it has helped my organization to get strengthened. And that is why I need to let you know the opportunity you're missing out without joining LinkedIn. So, how do you create a LinkedIn? All you just need to do is just search www.linkedin.com and sign up. And if you have to sign up, you will see the following information on your screen. You fill it, you know, Put your name, create a password. Then after that, to come to this profile, enter your country, zip code, follow the process. Now, in this area, many of you are still, stu if you are still a student, put student. And if you are working, if you are a student and you are working, put what you are doing there. And if you are a student and only thing you are doing is just going to school, just put associate researcher and put the name of your school there one thing about this fact is that everybody doing what you are doing all over the world will be your friend request suggestion on your profile everybody all over now if you stop this why are you creating your profile you're looking for contacts to get a job to stay updated build network you know what you need so just pick your preference you just step by step when you start it, you will see it and you put your email for you to get verified and that's all welcome to linkedin now there are three phases of linkedin optimization you have the trial and error you have reading a blog you have optimization tool and the fourth one is, an, is a suggestion, paying a coach. 
Now, if you check the statistics I show here, you will find out that 94% of recruiters are active on LinkedIn and only 36% of job seekers are active on LinkedIn. That is, people don't really look for a job on LinkedIn. It is, it is jobs that look for people on LinkedIn. When people see your skill, your proficiency, they reach out to you naturally because they need you to join their team. Please, am I communicating? Yes, sir. Yes, we can hear you, sir. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sorry, I'm in a car. So just to be sure. So the next 30 minutes, let's go to the real business. Your profile is your first online impression. And we have three categorization of what is jamming that you must do to get your profile optimized. If you have created your account earlier, or you just open an account. The top four, the summary, and the experience. Now, let's go to the top four. The first thing anybody can see is your look. Because choosing the right profile picture we says the signals and message about who you are. So you must choose the right expression, wear appropriate clothes, and the selfie masters, this is not for you to post a selfie. So you can see the two categorization of picture I set. Now, if you are a recruiter and you'll see this pictures, I want to hear from your people. Let's say this left hand, this left hand is option A. And the right hand picture is option B. If you are the person looking to give opportunity to people, out of the two folds, which one will you pick? Can I get a suggestion from you? Can I hear your feedback? Uh, the one on the right. All right, so can I get why so that I can know you can follow him? I will also go with option B. You no, know, they but, looked really professional and very presentable compared to the first one where they just used selfie and the background was really, really distracting. Yes, sir. So I will prefer the option B because it looks very official and it's 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 nice. It it looks very professional, as my colleague just said. Then it's just like. Thank you for that amazing contribution. Yeah, good. Now, I want you to now assess yourself. All your social media profile are they professional? Even going as low to your WhatsApp. Many of you cannot even use your picture as a WhatsApp picture. I don't know why. Many of you use different people's picture, even pastor's picture. I don't know why. Just be you. Because when people are looking out to connecting to opportunity and they'll check the picture and does not relate to what they have in their mind they naturally withdraw because they are doubting about the person they are communicating with. A bonus to all of you is that please, when you're using social media, use one picture across all social media or a very close picture that people can identify you easily. Your WhatsApp, your LinkedIn, your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram, if you have a blog, use one picture or two. It has a significance in projecting you as a professional being. Now, you need to build your profile strength. Your work experience, your skill, your volunteering experience, organizational experience, award, Writing a good summary. If you have taken any test that is good, put it there. 
you have gotten any publication, show it. If you have any interest, you can. A lot of project that you have done, certification, put it out there. Now, LinkedIn is the alternate of a CV or a resume. Whatever you have in your CV, just transfer them to your LinkedIn. It is just same approach, which means that if you don't have a CV, you can generate a CV through LinkedIn. You can. The only difference is there is just a summary. And in your CV, you have what we call profile, but in your LinkedIn, you have summary. We'll get there. Now, for those who have a LinkedIn account, there's something we'll call notify your network for updates. Maybe as you're updating your profile, it will be sharing with your people. Maybe if you're conversing on your LinkedIn very well, you will see some people that if they get a new job, you get an update that someone does get a new job. If they get one opportunity, you get an opportunity that someone gets an opportunity because they have opened this notification bar. So for me, I pull mine off. Because I don't know why I need to be disturbing people that I'm getting this, I'm getting that, I'm getting this. If you want to check it, go and check a profile. So 24 minutes more. Let's go. Now, this is an headline. Your headline is the first expression that people will see about you. So this is option A, option B. Now, what does an headline contain? Headline give expression to your specialty. What are you good at doing? In summary. So, headline make you very findable. It helps people to see more of a profile that it attracts your profile to people. It's like a bait. So what do you need to put on your profile? Or I mean your headline. What you do, where you do what you do, why you do what you do, how you do what you do. Yeah. It must focus on your expertise and experience. I'll give an example. Look at what I have on screen. He said. BS Mechanical Engineering, Michigan Tech, Manufacturing, New Product Design, Mechatronics. Look at the second person. He said, Dining Service Supervisor at Michigan Technological University. In bracket, really an MEEM student. That is Mechanical Engineering, mechan uh, Electrical Mechatronic student, mechatronic student. So out of the two headlines, which one will you prefer? Can I get a feedback quickly? Okay, personally, I prefer Jane student's profile because it is really, really like, I don't know the right word to use now, but it is specific, yes, specific and really clear. That means what exactly she does. Another person. Okay, um, as a person, I will go for Jane students. Why? Because it's more engaging, specific, as the first person said, and is or is so professional all right thank you very much i think majority are going for gene students now for what you can see there it talks about his specialization his skills and his expertise so these are the things that you're going to focus on let me show you an example to me this is my linkedin about um about two years ago, two years ago. Now I said operation manager at Vintage Center, project manager with 50 project plus record. I help people build potential with advantage and relevance. 
10,000 youth rich for security advocate and this. Now, I put this beside this so that you can see how you can correct this notion. I can correct these settings. There is a pen beside of the profile. There's a pen behind the profile. If you click the pen, you see this box pop up. Uh, it's from this pop up that you can make correction to your profile. So that is why I show this there. I hope you got what I said. All right, so let's move very quickly. The second thing I need to do is that you need to customize your URL. Your URL shows how professional you are. So you are using your mobile phone. You can scroll down, scroll down your profile. You will see your URL. You see a pen beside this, and you correct it. One of you will see, you will find your name, and you will see dash and some numbers behind it. So you need to reduce it to your name. So that's why I put this there. And you can copy this link and paste it on your CV. This is easy to click and it will load straight to your profile. So in a practical essence of what I give people after them taking this LinkedIn class is I tell them to copy their profile URL. I'm very sure that there is a, oh, um, I believe that there is a group for everybody, there's a WhatsApp group for everybody. So after that, you can you can copy your profile URL and paste it there for people to connect with you, okay? Now, the next thing is writing a compelling summary. Because of time, because I think I have 19 minutes more now. Now, what do you need to put in your summary? The summary is your virtual handshake, your personal introduction that might present you as if you are talking to people face to face. It shows your genuity, your conversational tone, your description. You are just telling about people about yourself. So summary is just like your citation. So the way you pitch it out to people would matters so I, I have some examples but most of time i will just show can screenshot it and read it later that can show you what you write now your first paragraph must be like a short introduction about yourself your second paragraph must tell us what you do why you are passionate about what you're doing the top paragraph must describe an highlight of what you have done your fourth highlight must show a contact relationship of what you have been doing, a connection. And you can list out your skills, whatever is convenient for you. And most importantly, you must use buzzwords or keywords to your feed. So how do you write your LinkedIn summary? Very important to write in first person. You know, and uh, you introduce yourself well, write it in a captivating storytelling manner. Okay? And the character of writing a summary is 2,000. So you have a luxury of lengthy words to write, depending on you. And one thing is, don't think, once you have written your summary once, that is it forever. No. You keep revising it. It might take you time for you to write a professional summary. One of my key advice for you is any niche you have, any area you have, search for people that have gone ahead of you, read their profile, their summary, read about five summary, copy their summary, take time. You can edit their summary to fit where you are. Don't worry, I did that many years ago. I've been, I copy people's profile, I read and fine tune into my own taste. And now I've been writing my own summary for the past two years, yes. But in 2018, 2019, I was copying people's LinkedIn. I was editing and editing. I read about six. I will fine tune and edit it to mine. I still have their samples on my mobile phone. So like I keep remembering myself. I started. Uh -huh. So it's not, it wasn't a day job. Okay. So you, get, you keep revising this. Then... Ask your resume. 
you can check what you have in your CV and fine tune it in the storytelling with into your summary. This is an example of a LinkedIn summary. You can screenshot it if you can. All right, so let me move on. I think the time is very fast. Here's another example of a LinkedIn summary. Yeah. So let me move quickly. Um, your experience bar. Where have you worked before? Put the description of where you've worked before, your relevant skills, where you have worked. It helps a lot. Now, internship, a lot of things that you have done, just know how to put this together in words. Just your, the way you did your CV, just copy your CV and put it there. Okay. In your educational background, for me now, I graduated from Faculty of Agriculture in OAU, so you can fit all those things in your educational bar. You've taken a professional courses in a school, a school enrollment, you can put it there. Put your volunteering experience, honor and award publications and the likes. And um, yeah, remember your provide priority. Your headlines, your URL, they're filling your professional experience, your certifications, your education, your honors and awards, your test score, put it there, then your summary. You know, tell people about yourself, why you do what you do, why you love what you do. Make it an experiential moment for yourself. Then write your experience functional experience in bullet points. What is convenient for you, just put it there, okay? But one of the things I do is that, why I make this very fast is, it is mostly a practical class. So anything I teach you, I go to my page and I practicalize it for you. <laughs> so that is it. It's not just a theory, theory stuff or an abstractive profile training. But I don't know the plan of how you want us to go about it. One thing I can do is that maybe the first um, 20 persons or the leadership of the church you decide, I can help you vet your LinkedIn profile, uh, make comment on your profile for what you need to make adjustments on. I can do that to be a contribution to the program. Yeah, I can help you check your profile, set your profile and make comments when you are done. So, so let me give you my conclusion and I quickly run to my own LinkedIn so you can have a view. So let me finish by saying this, that um, it's been a long journey that you have you started with me on this short conversation of LinkedIn. It's, a, it's like a three masterclass session that we have within 45 minutes. But I want you to know that this is not the end of LinkedIn. It's a gradual process and you can't, you can't, um, get to the peak in a day is that you join in a school whereby you start from level one level two level three to you finish school same things like linkedin you can't get it done in a day it's a process so you must keep enjoying it you must keep doing it and you get better at it by the time you keep doing it okay so i want to encourage you to complete your application uh, if you want to have a master class session you can reach out to me but i will want to have a master class session with you because this is a church thing and I, I, I'm a product of Kaki of OAU, and I got my opportunity from Kaki of OAU. And where I am to the glory of God is a platform I received to the support from my fellowship. So I'll be doing this for my fellowship that I volunteered myself to help you guys, leaders, brethren, to vet your profile, to vet your profile, uh, maybe. For the next uh maybe like two now throughout next week i can help you do that throughout next week i will create my time to check your profile create a whatsapp group for people sending your url add me there i will do it for you to so honor khaki off and i'm a product of the church and i'm a proud member of the church and i will keep being a proud member of the church making you proud everywhere i am yes so this is what i'll be telling you about this so please you're looking for scholarship you're looking for grant opportunities 
you are looking for publications, I got all these on LinkedIn. My first grant came from LinkedIn, meeting people. My trip outside the country came from LinkedIn. My job, I finished school recently, and you know, people have been saying there is no job, there's no job. I don't know. I right now, as of this morning, I see I have 140 job offers on my page. If you think you have a skill that can help you with when I check your LinkedIn, I can send you job opportunities or send job opportunities to the pages where we belong together. I can do that to another church. I can tell you there is job in this country. There is job. Don't be bubble. There is job. I paying job in this country. So I've seen several job opportunities, but I've not done my service. But I can tell you that jobs, I've seen it myself. I've witnessed it myself. And I can tell you, other studies, scholarship, there are a lot of these on LinkedIn. I've seen professors get grants to help their students. So I don't know what more I can tell you about LinkedIn than that. LinkedIn is for you. So in five minutes, let me quickly show you my... Let me show you my... Um, sorry, I'm sweating. God. Let me show you my LinkedIn profile. Let me share the entire screen so you can see. Be sorry, I'm on a project in Oshogo, so just got to park and take this class. All right, so, all right, let me show you my LinkedIn. If you can see my LinkedIn, please just um, signify so that you can know I'm talking with you. Yes, we can see it, sir. All right, it's loading. It's very hot. All right, so this is my own LinkedIn account. Let me zoom in a bit. All right, so I'll be just believe that you can see my screen. This yes, you can account. see. So let me quickly load. I think I have three minutes to show you my page. Now you can see that I've changed my profile. So I'm a global chain maker. I'm a project manager with 60 project record. I have to become better version of themselves. 100,000 you to reach SDG advocates, RLC, you know, you can see it yourself. So this is the URL, you can see my cursor, are you seeing? Is here very close to my very close to my um wallpaper there. The end of this wallpaper is to showcase what you are doing to people so that people can see a an overview of what you are doing. So these are my team. So let me scroll down to my profile so you can have a quick look. So like I said, it's not a day journey, so don't rush yourself. So this is my LinkedIn summary. If you have the time, maybe later on you can go and check it. This is my LinkedIn summary. These are my job experiences, the one I'm telling you. So this is my job experience. You can see my job experiences. So I have 21 experience, job experience on LinkedIn. You can go and check it. Education, you can see my educational knowledge. My other schools, you can check it there. My license and qualifications, you can see there. Project I've done, you can see there. And the volunteering experience, you can see there. The skills are my endorsement, you can see there. Yeah, these are my recommendations. And recommendations help your LinkedIn get stronger. So you need a recommendation. So these are my, I think I have about 113 recommendations on LinkedIn. These are my publications. These are the courses I've taken. These are my honors and award. 
Okay, so. Alright, okay. right, so these are my test call you can check. And these are the organization I've worked with. So, and these are my interests. So, that's it. So, it's not a day job. I have one minute for the case. It's not a day job, but I tell you, it's a gradual process. If you believe you can, you will. And uh, please don't doubt yourself. Rome wasn't built in a day. So, that is. So, my name on every social media is Ekunda Yolo Damilare. Uh, the name of my organization is White Up Global. You can search us online. I have more knowledge about what we do. We are open for collaboration. And this is exactly 955. So I think it's better I stop projecting my screen. We are now. All right. Sorry, please. I'm going. All right. So, if you have any question for me, I think I have about five minutes to go. Okay. So I'm open to your questions. Okay. Thank you very, Thank you very much. much. I'm grateful for the opportunity. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Kundaya, for that wonderful session. Thank you very much. And guys, you know, I'll keep saying it. I hope you are with your jotters and your pen because it is necessary to take down the things he told us. I'll just do a, a quick recap for those that maybe they came late. We talked about LinkedIn optimizing your profile, you know. It says something about LinkedIn being like your um virtual CV. Yes, you know, on LinkedIn, people professionals they get to read more about you. That's why you actually have to take the effort to portray yourself properly. For those of us that use selfies as our wallpapers, you know, deep our display picture rather, you know, you have to change them. And there's even this new invention of AI, AI photos. So you can just like leverage on that and make sure you get a professional shot in case you don't really have the means to get a professional headshot yet. So you can leverage on using AI pictures for your display photos. Also, he talked about, yeah, he gave a very amazing opportunity for us. You know, he said, um, although we'll still get more information from the organizers of this program, but it will be reviewing 20 people's profile. And for you to qualify for this, I'm, I'm not speaking on behalf of the authorities yet, but for you to qualify for this, you know that you have to have a LinkedIn account first. You have to do the necessary things he asks you to do before you be qualified for this. So after this session, it will be really, really amazing if you don't have a profile yet, if you don't have an account yet, go open one do the necessary things write your headline write your write your profile you no know, input your certifications you no know, most of the time we took courses and then now is the time for us to be accountable for those courses you know you go to your linkedin profile it is it is necessary to to tell people things you've done like for your personal development and to help you so now it's time for questions i'm sure we all have questions to ask like we all have questions to ask. We all have questions to ask. And if you know you have a question to ask, you can type it in the comment section and I will, I will read your question out. But I can see some people are raising their hand presently. If it is for a question, you can please keep your hands raised. I have a question to read here. Mr. Kundayo, are you with us, sir? Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Okay. The first question, how can we network with other professionals on LinkedIn? And the second question, what should I be doing after setting up my profile? All right. So the first thing is, what do you want to use LinkedIn for? Are you a student looking for opportunity? You can use it for LinkedIn for opportunity search. 
So it depends what you want to use LinkedIn for. Now, how do you connect with people? There are two ways to connect people on LinkedIn. The first one is when you check people's profile, you can see connect. And you will see a three dot. If you can't see connect directly, you see a three dot beside the profile. Like you will see follow, message, and the like. So click the three dots. When you click the three dots, you will you will see personalized invite. Use personalized invite for someone that is ahead of you. Don't just send connect anyhow. Use personalized invite. Personalized invite strengthen your connection. And from your profile, if your profile is good and you later need the opportunity, you can open up that you need job. So these are advantage that LinkedIn will show for you to show you different job opportunity. Anything you set on your profile, LinkedIn will always connect such opportunity to your DM or your mail. You always see it. Do you understand? I hope I answered your question. Yes, thank you very much, sir. So I don't know, do you have any other questions? Anyone? Do you have more questions to ask? Do we have more questions to People ask? People are raising up their hands. Okay. Maybe you can yes, just yes, yes. call them to entertain their question. Okay, Aregba Shola Adeboye. So let's have you. You can unmute yourself and ask your question. Hello. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Yes, my question is, like, now, you said that depending on what you create your LinkedIn account for, that's the kind of recommendations that will be sent to you. Can we, like, do something like reaching out to people even abroad and connecting to them? Yeah, sure. It's not for Nigerians. It's not for people in the local, okay? I mean, global people, global people, global network. Now, I have a friend, a new friend from Pakistan, about three days ago that she reached out that she needed a job or something. And I'm like, let's see how we can work together. So it's, it's a platform for you to explore globally, right? Meet people, tell people about what you do, what you want, you know, find like minds. Like, when I was a student, I joined some fellowship, which I want to advise every student that you are here. Please, in any of your institution, join um jc high if you can if you can find it you cannot find jc high join isec if you cannot join isec find white top global in your school we have presence in about 23 campuses in 23 states okay find them now in your states Find Yali, Yali Network. We have Yali Network in 36 states, including FCT, making 37 in Nigeria. Now, I'm here, you can see my hand. I'm here on a project. Today is World Environmental Day. So we are here on a project with Yali. So you must join an association, organization that can make you better. So that can enlist you to join bigger fellowship. Now, as a student, in your school, please go and find, go online and search Millennium Fellowship. Millennium Fellowship is a global fellowship that is present in about 100 countries. Just go and search it out. This platform connects youth across the world together. So find Millennium Fellowship. If you think you have done enough volunteering work, whether student or youth, Find Jali RLC, Regional Leadership Center, Accra. Find it online and apply. These are body that can help you grow. And if you are a youth, maybe better student or no student, you can join Sustainable Development Solution Network. Please find them online. Everything is free. Okay? And I have one last opportunity for, I don't know whether we have people that are not students here. My host, do you have no students here? Yes, sir. We have non students here. Okay, so are you uh, maybe a graduate? 
anything, any position you are, and you are looking for opportunity to enjoy grants throughout of Nigeria, explore with all expense paid. Please note this website opportunitydesk.org. You will thank me later. Just save it on your browser opportunitydesk.org. When you search this, look for any area that interests you. They are sponsored trip globally that you just need people to attend. And when you attend, you are coming back. They still give you like 2,000 euros, 1,500 dollars, like a stipend for traveling. So information is vital. I've seen prof, my lecturers, so that people get grants to support students. So you have to save that platform. And for 20 people that I will be reviewing their um, LinkedIn, I will give you one other platform, one site, that you can get a job as a student. At least you can help yourself in school. School fees is now increased. You can make some money for yourself. Lega job, Lega. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can connect to as many people as you want. All right. So any other press question, please? Okay. Thank you very much, sir. And I hope that has answered your question, Eric Bechela. So, um, Stephen Clement, your hands are raised. So please, can you ask your question? Yes, it has. Um, sorry, it has. before he asks his question, uh, let us, so that we won't take the time of our speaker. Uh, we celebrate you, sir. God bless you, sir um uh, let's everybody ask all their questions if it is something that can just be answered at once so okay. that you won't waste uh the time of our speaker okay so Stephen clement please be fast with your question you're free to ask a question now omoni let me please get set too okay oh uh, thank you very much for the opportunity Although I came late, so but I still I was able to pick some a lot of things. Thanks, also. And my question is um, you know when I came, I it was it's talking about the, the lingard and how to connect with people around the globe. Um, my concern is um, how um legit it is. Even though it's legit, is there any possibility to to meet up with um scammers on on lingard? Because this this is a global store, so. You can find anybody there. So, what are the IR weeks? Is there any weeks to it? Is there any is there any way that you that that we are sure that this we, we are we are not going to like get anybody like uh, a scammer on the platform? And that's my question. Thank you very much. Getting scammers on LinkedIn. See, the truth is, scammers are everywhere, right? But one thing you must know is. Before you can be scammed, you must check your own mindset, right? When you see someone's profile giving you what it is not, you will see, you will see proof. It's like me calling myself a professor, right? I mean, professor in the literal sense of professorship. And you check my LinkedIn, and the only thing you can find is BSc. And you now look at the range of my schooling, maybe I finished school in 2021. It's not possible I become a professor in 2023. It's not logical. I said, I want to give you an opportunity to travel. You to go and check my profile. Does it what someone I can give opportunity? What I'm saying I can do for you. You have to go and confirm yourself by checking those people all my contact that is LinkedIn for you. So the scammers are everywhere. They won't write it in their head, right? But one thing you must note is that you must check the profile of that someone promising you everyone hearts. You must check what the person posts about previous work of the person. And this is a test for everybody. But that question is brilliant and sensitive. Anybody that wants to help you. Take your browser, I mean your browser, maybe your Chrome, anyone you use, press the person's full name. Google will search every 
everywhere that name has popped up before anywhere you are shouted out you, are, you will find it there Except the person using that name entirely. These are the tests. I, when I was telling you, I said visibility. So before you fall into the hands of a scammer, check the visibility test. I hope I answered your question. So scammers are everywhere. They won't uh, yeah. in their head. Yes, but that, search. Yeah, that is. Bible, Bible said, test all things. Test it. Test it yourself. And is it that, okay, can they form profile? Because someone can form profile to... to, to because these people are very much intelligent, so they can form provide no matter what. So they can form it to that to to convince you more. So what about how about that? You are right. Anybody see people people pay people to write profile for them, but there's other platform now. See, okay now. Someone recommended a professor to me because I need another. I want to advance my career. So I set I checked the professor professor on. Um, on LinkedIn, I press the name on Google. I saw the name where the person claimed that he's working. I searched there and I saw his bow details and I now mail in. Even when I sent him request, he rejected my request. He said he's afraid of scammers too. But many people want opportunity, but they don't want to do anything. Very lazy, you know. So you must test. If you have done LinkedIn test, do google test okay google will bring everything you for me now personally me anytime i post on my linkedin you will find it on my facebook you find it on my instagram you find it on my twitter these are the way i found people who are giving about the that's what they do not only linkedin you will find them in other places though the strength might not be as equal you know i mean i'm kind of um proficiency because every platform has the way it works, right? But you must just find out. Okay, if there's a website where the button claim is working, click it, search. Look at the connection, the friend of that person on that platform. Okay? And that please, don't fine. be too eager too. Okay, yeah. It's very much clear now, at least. It's very much clear. All right. Thank you, sir. God bless. Okay, yeah. thank you very much, sir, for that. Now, Omoni Femi, it's time to ask your question. And please, Sefas Alokon, please get set to ask your question after Omoni Femi. Thank you. All right, good morning. Thank you so much, sir, for that presentation. Um, I don't have a question. I only want to request for your slide. Yeah, I don't know if it can be made available to your audience. Please, Sefas, please, can we have your question, too? Okay, thank All right. you. Okay. All right, sir. Good morning, sir. Yeah, so my question is, okay, for instance, now, um, like for myself, concerning our LinkedIn account, you know, you talked about um, what we have to focus on. So for me now, I have my degree in, I have my degrees in an engineering field. But then I also work as a research assistant and also do content writing. So the contention has been, what exactly should my LinkedIn account focus on? Where should is it okay to like have, have the three different fields displayed? Or um, do I have to, or do just I have to focus on one particular area? Thank you. Okay, sir. Please, before you answer that, there's also one more question. Someone asked that: Is White Top Global in UI University of Ibadan? So thank you. You can answer the question, sir. All right. So the first question is, will I lose my slide? The answer is yes, but not for everybody. I think that's a procedure that everyone registered for this session. And I think, I don't know whether there's an attendance for this session. Yeah. So I will forward it to um, my host and the host will do dusty to anyone they want to share it with. Okay. So is the host that will now find the criteria for sending it out. That was not a problem. I will send it out. Now, the second question is, must you specify a particular niche? See, no matter any area that you have, you have strength in one than the other. For me, my link is on three categories, agriculture, capacity development, and social development. The three is what I combine together. 
as well you'll find all my social media okay now anyone that you need there's profile for them so link in just general so when you put out your skill anyone you have put if see you must have a technical knowledge experiential knowledge and professional knowledge technical knowledge is what you study in your school okay professional knowledge is what you've learned like say content writing and you have developed your skill in it now, experiential knowledge is your work gather over the period of time okay so anyway you want to use it now as a content writer your knowledge in technical background in engineering is an advantage for you not like someone that not do anything i just call him or myself content writer mm -mm. you have a technical knowledge so your technical knowledge is very important so combine the three together and put it out okay so anyone you want to apply for opportunity for you need opportunity on you can always shoot your shots so don't limit yourself in a, see anything you think you can do push it out please don't 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 do self-limitation god has not limited you push it out you said on my profile i push everything out anything that will help my life because a close route is a close destiny me too i need help so you have to tell people that you need help i would have got you now it's white up in ui yes white up is in ui but i think my people they have graduated but we are coming back just check our website or you can reach out to me through christiana you can continue our conversation but white up is everywhere in every campus sees but i think i think i did about a 36 campuses enrollment about last year but you can check our website if you're not in your campus you can come up and set up in your campus and you can check out our us on website on our website www.whiteupglobal.org if you are interested in what we do, youth development, basically an SDG oriented project, we are ready for you. Any other question, please? Okay. Thank you very much, sir, for the exposition, you know, and the topic LinkedIn optimization. And in the absence of more questions, I guess it's time to say a very big thank you for coming. Thanks for honoring our invite. And we all wish you, we wish you a very um, stress-free stress -free program. You know, you have a program that you want to attend now. Yeah. So thank you very much for coming, sir. Yeah, I, so I also want to say thank you, Mr. Ikunda. Thank you for accepting our invites. We so much appreciate. And we'll reach out to you for, and thank you for the opportunities, actually. It is a real one, actually. And we're all doing this for the kingdom. And we appreciate that. We will reach out to you as regards that. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very, Thank you very much. much. I'm honored. One food, one shepherd. We keep becoming an ambassador. We keep repping Christ anywhere we are. I love you all. Thank you very much. I'm honored. How careful are you? I did with you. <laughs> Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you very much. Yes, all right. So now I'll be calling on yeah i should ask how was that session i will be expecting your replies in the comment section i'll be expecting you to react with emojis how was the last session for you how was the last session for you because personally it was amazing it was really really enlightening and it was mind-blowing honestly yeah like we said it was enlightening my fellow said it was wonderful it was glorious um, Oliwale said it was eye opening. Kakef Oye said it was powerful to say the least. Seven is saying it was amazing. Lucifer said, said, I learned that I should push out anything that can help with my life. Honestly, we don't have to keep the great things we can do to ourselves. People should know what we do. Olani Yonjimake said it was eye opening for her. Wow. Thank you very much, guys. And now I'll be inviting to the podium my co host, Jesu Tofumi Ebewale to introduce us to the next section. Thank you. All right, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. So um, I want to say thank you to our host, Christiana. So thank you for coming me on board. So my name remains Jesus for me So I want to ask again how has the session be going? Uh, so I just want you to type it in the comment section. I'm limitless. I'm limitless. I'm limitless. I'm limitless. 
type it in the comment section. I'm limitless. I'm limitless. All right. So uh, we we are going forward into the next session. So I speaker is Mr. Tokumbo Olabodi. So um I'll be reading his recitation shortly. So please just listen attentively as I read um his recitation. So Mr. Olubo Day Tokumbo is a multiple time award winning entrepreneur with years of experience in business ranging from cryptocurrency, digital marketing, business visibility and partnership to mention but entrepreneur is passionate about helping others entrepreneur boost their sales by connecting them to potential clients through lead generation and engagement via various social media platforms, sort of WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and LinkedIn. He's currently scaling the Amtos brand. It's a personal brand by, ex by existing Web2 and creating web 3 related human capital development content for the community. This community has fresh graduates and professionals with two to three years work experience. He successfully and built the community from ranging from 50 to 70 to over 50,000 in audience size. Olapo Dito Kumbo is intentional about living, disciplined at the standing innovation. Can we join me? Welcome, Mr. Tokumbo Olapo You're welcome, sir. All right. Good morning, sir. Um, how are you doing, sir? Good morning, sir. You're welcome. All right. I hope I'm fine, sir. Yes, sir. You're audible. We can hear you, sir. All right. So, um, thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you so much, Ma, for the um, opportunity to share what the little I know. And thank you for the uh, for the grace. It has been grace, actually. And then thank you, Mr. Oluwaseun Sefas Aloko. Thank you, Mr. Gideon. And thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. I appreciate this opportunity. So, um. Well, I am. Um, I, I actually traveled, and it was an urgent stuff. So that's why I see me inside the car, and just like I just have to like deliver because it has been scheduled already, and it can be shifted. So, um, well, I what I do basically, you know, just like uh, my citation mentioned that um, Syria entrepreneur. Yeah, everything started on um, on campus as an undergraduate. My undergrad level, I was a journalist. I worked uh, as a journalist on campus and blogger. Yeah, I started with Campus Villa. Then it was owned by Mr. Olua Shewa Lokon. Campus Villa, he started it, and then I was his assistant. Then at the point, I became his um, my chief editor. And I think I did that for my undergrad level. I did it in 200 level. Then 300 level, we stopped. And then I became a blogger. Part, part three, yeah doing businesses, still doing the PR stuff, and put you advertise because I have audience, I put you advertise your product. Like being intentional because you know, um life is all about a journey and life is process. You start the fact that you start something now doesn't mean you're going to stop at that thing. It means it's a process. Like for instance now Facebook, when Facebook started, you know it all started as a free platform, but today they are making billions of dollars in ads and other services they offer but i knew that in the at the initial um stuff they didn't see that they, they are going to make so much or they are going to make money max whoever they say that way so you know in this life when you want to do something just do it and along the way don't wait till everything is perfect and then i remember in my maybe part three i was using one small techno like that but i'll see wake up like 3 a.m 4 a.m i will have joined i will have um edited all the news on campus in fact, I even got into trouble at the point when I published the news. That was in my part two with my lecture because I published a news. I had to do with the department and the child got saw me through it. And then 
that case passed. My phone was seized. But I didn't stop. I still continued. That was my part three. Part two, part three. Then part four, I still continued doing it. But the clarity keep coming and it keeps getting better. So in part four, I, I was still doing the online stuff, right? But I started a business on the side, which is vendor market. I'm still going to come to that. But this morning, let me see if I can share my... Uh, let me share my slide. Uh, okay. Just a minute. So I'll be, this morning, I'll be speaking. I'll come back to my story, yeah? But this morning, let me, I'll be speaking on um, job strategies and online platforms. So our people always complain, ah, there's no job, there's no job. Ah, this, 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 that, blah, blah, blah. How do I get a job? There's no job here and there. But some people are still learning those jobs. Or some people, are, that, some, some, some people, the job is even coming to them and they are the one worth rejecting. So how do you land the jobs? How do you get these jobs? How do you position yourself for jobs? How do you position yourself for um, opportunity? I'm coming. So you understand? How do you even position yourself for this? Um, how do you position yourself for this opportunity? Sorry, I'm coming. Trying to. Sorry, please. I'm trying to. So, uh -huh. please, can you see my can you see my screen? I want to be sure you can see it. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. We can see. Yes, we can see your screen, sir. Okay, so you can see my yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Good. Thank you. So, what is a job to start with? You see, if there is anything that we, in our society, right, if there is anything that is going to earn you uh, respect, is your job. Are you doing something? And what are you doing? Are you doing it with all diligence? Even the Bible said it in the book of Proverbs. That says that a man was diligent in his what? In his business, on his work, and his work, he's going to stand before kings and not near men. So, my definition of job is anything that helps you earn a living, pays you with a sense. Sometimes I usually tell people that when you are doing a job, at times it's not about the money you even make, it's about finding fulfillment in that stuff you are doing aside the payment. Are you happy doing it? So, that's I don't like people when people are stuck with something that they are doing. Oh, let me just do it for the money. Do it with a sense of fulfillment. Job is anything that pays you. With a sense of fulfillment, even if you won't be paid, but it brings what that fulfillment to you. So basically, you feel fulfilled doing it, which means that that stuff you are doing, even if they're asking you to volunteer or if they're asking you to do it for free, you will what gladly do it and do it. And I have something that I usually do, which is this, or which I even employ people to do on that promise, but what over deliver. There are some times that I will write CVs for people and they will send new. Okay, when you want to write CV with me, for instance, when you want to, after you make payments and then you fill a form, that form has everything that, that you want to fill. Even right from your date of birth, everything, right from where you were born, anything that you want to fill, that form has provision for rich. So most of the time, when you are done, I'll be like, okay, thank God, I'm done with this job. Let me move to the next one. The next thing, you just maybe two or three days later, when you have moved on and you're like, oh, this job is done, let me start on that one. They'll just come back and be like, sir, I forgot. And I forgot I had this certificate. I forgot I worked in this place. And I didn't know it was really important. Can you can you all those kind of stuff? But what? I will still go ahead and do it for them. And I make sure what when I'm doing this job for them, they are what satisfied. So anywhere you are working, make sure you give your best because it's that best that will give you the desired progress that you want. Because you don't know who or what you will do for somebody when delivering that job that will require you or any another job. Right, so the strategies for getting this job, there are many strategies. You see, one of the strategies for getting this job, number one, usually people come to me that say, I want to work here or I want to learn a skill, I want to do this, but I don't know. Help me to pick. I usually tell people that see, people can't pick what you want for you. I don't know you as much as you know yourself. 
for me now, anything that has to do with calculation, I don't involve myself in it. It's not my strength. But when it comes to reading, right? Hey, uh-huh, see, that is my strength. So I would just say that what? Try as much as you can to play by your strengths. If it's writing that is your strength, make sure that you position yourself or job opportunities that is in line with writing. If it's calculation that you want, position yourself for opportunities that is in line with calculation. Now, for writing, you can, you can be a content writer. You can be a content developer. You can be uh, a content marketer. So there's a lot of writing stuff. You can be a SOP, a CV writer, statement of purpose, all those writing stuff. You can be an academic writer. That is your strength. So what I really advise people that try to know your strength and what play by it, maximize it to the last. So one of the strategies involved in getting a job is what? Your strategy. What strategy do you want to imbibe? And number one strategy that may usually, for me, is mental work. Think about it. Okay, you want to work with MTM as this or as that what do i need to do what do i need to learn what are the people that i need in this stuff that will position me for this that will position me for this opportunity and then strategy is, any, is mental work any purpose to implement so you know you have already done that mental work you have done that calculation that okay in the next one year if i start learning programming in the next one year i should be able to learn maybe java c sharp and all those kind of stuff. And then the next two years, I will now, now specialize to maybe front end or back end. And then for you to do this, one of the things that you have to do is you have to do your SWOT analysis. SWOT analysis, S-W-O-T. And that S stands for strength. The W stands for weakness. The O stands for opportunities. And the T stands for threats. Now, this strength is what I just finished mentioning some few minutes ago. You play by your strength. You know what is your strength? Some people is calculation. Some people is writing. What is your strength? What, 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 how would I put it? What can you do effortlessly? Some people is singing. You get play by your strength. No, I usually tell people something that you see, one of the things that is very important in life is understanding yourself. If you understand yourself, you won't have problems. So that when you understand yourself, is when, when you understand yourself, is, um, that is when something will happen or an opportunity will come your way. And you know that no, this is not for me, because you know that this is not your strength, and you maybe you might end up struggling and not deliver to the maximum. But when something is your strength, you deliver even more than expected. You get you deliver even more than expected. So play by your strength. Your strength, you know what is your strength? What is that 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 stuff that 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 you enjoy doing? So the W stands for weakness. Now, this weakness can be that, that maybe you are not really good in that particular thing. How can you measure up? One of the ways that you can measure up, for instance, let's say maybe you, are, you, you like calculation and you like all the data analysis, uh, um, data science and all those things. And you notice that you are not really good in those things. How can you cover up for that weakness? One of the ways you can cover up that, for that weakness is to acquire the right skill. Acquiring the right, right skill. Take courses. Attend webinars. Read up on it. Make your research. You see, the route to finding a job that you, that you so much desire is not an easy one. But it, 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 it is achievable and then you feel fulfilled. So what is your weakness and what is what can you work on that weakness? The all stand for opportunities. Now, if you are a data analyst, what are the opportunities that are there for you in your industry? You see, every industry has opportunities in abundance. It just boils down to you to what to position yourself for that opportunity that's in that place if you're a data analyst you have the, if you go to linkedin for instance you see a lot of data analyst jobs on linkedin in us in uk netherlands canada a lot so when you see those opportunities and you position yourself very well as a very good data analyst you know opportunities abound if you are a, um a digital marketer there are a lot of digital marketing we talk companies looking for people that will help them set up their pages for marketing if you are a writer, there are a lot of companies hiring both on-site and remote, writing jobs, making thousands of dollars, making a lot of money in that writing. So, so that, those are the opportunities. And then find the opportunities that you want in your industry when you are um, carrying out your SWOT analysis. Then the T are the threats. What are the... Okay, I'm, I want to be a data analyst now. What are the threats to this stuff that I want to learn? Like the shortcomings. Because every industry have their own uh, 
threat. What is like for data analysis, and for instance, at times maybe you might not get the calculation right, or you might not be analyzed it right, or it might be that maybe uh maybe you don't have a very good laptop that will be able to take in some apps for your analysis stuff, or maybe as a writer, you are not you don't know how to network very well to get jobs based on referral and all those things. You don't know the um, site where you can stay or position yourself for those opportunities to come. So carry out a SWOT analysis. It's very, very important. Sit down, take your pen and biro, write it. My strengths are this. One, two, three. Okay, good. These are my strengths. Then you now, when you write maybe five, you can now strike it out one after the other, one after the other. Till you come to the best one that you think, okay, this is the one I want to go with and I'm ready to go all in. If you want to go for something, right, go all in. Like, go all in, totally all in. Then the O, oh, the opportunity, like I said, and the T, the threat. So number two, what are you and what do you enjoy doing or find fulfillment doing? So the question is, who are you? Do you understand yourself? Because there's a way I don't understand themselves. They wait for people to dictate who they are, which is wrong. Nobody should tell you who you are. Nobody should determine what you want or what you want to achieve. And that is why I usually have people that uh, they can't make the decision by themselves they have to wait there's no there, you see there's a different thing between you asking for advice and you making your own decision that okay this is what i want and this is what i'm going to achieve and most of the time why people don't fight fulfillment is because what they are doing is not even them that pick it somebody else picked it for them and that person can be you that person's experience is different from your own experience Childhood up, uh, upbringing, environment, life experiences, lessons, and all those things differs for everybody. Where I grew up is different from where you grew up. My experiences is different from what entirely different from what, what you enjoy doing is different from what I'm what I enjoy. So who are you exactly? Who are you? So one of your greatest or strongest points is knowing who you are, knowing your person, knowing the kind of person you are. That this is what works for me. So that you won't say so that when you know what works for you, you won't hear that today is affiliate marketing that is um, that is selling. Next thing you two are doing affiliate marketing. Ah, they say it's coding that the money. They say ah, oh, more programmers are making money these days. So sha 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 sha. You two are from after learning programming. In the next two or three months, you already you, you you you've given up already because you can't continue. You can't keep up. That is not your strength. Ah, they say is um, um which other this. Uh, that is um selling next thing you two want to start go, no more just stay one place and be good in that one place it's not, there's nothing wrong in there if it's fine master one i just tell people master one and if it's fine life is a journey life is a journey and we get better the journey was get better daily the journey was get better daily the journey was get better daily when you start doing something clarity will come so, Jack of, to me, I'm, some people say, um, Jack of all trade, master of no, life is a journey. That you start doing something today doesn't mean that in the next two years, three years, you can't change. Nobody will be there to feed you when you go hungry, if that is what you want. Because most of the time, what gets you here, what gets you to, to 400 level, for instance, from 100 level to 400 level, will not get you a job outside campus. Or what, what got you to um, maybe your master's level or this thing, will not get you to the post of a manager. So, you have to up your game every time you have to review review your journey maybe every three months every six months how am i doing financially how am i doing spiritually how am i doing mentally am i progressing am i succeeding am i getting this thing review always car car carry out a self-analysis this is what i do often i'll just look at it my friends okay this person okay oh, my 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 relationship with this person is okay are we progressing is he adding to me am i adding to him is he impacting me am i impacting him if you don't just live life brrr, like that, brrr, some people just live life. No, re no self analysis, no intentionality. They don't do it. They don't live in life, which is wrong. So don't let the word people, family, or circle detect who you are. Pray and follow God's lead. You see that prayer is very, very important. When you have picked a, 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 a niche that you want to, a job or something that you want to do, pray about it. Hear from God, commit that into God's hands and put in the work. The fact that you pray now doesn't mean you should not put in the work. No. When you pray, you collaborate to the work and you see that yes, everything is going to work out for you perfectly. Commit everything to God. Even the Bible said it. Pray without ceasing. 
and and book of Matthew is it Matthew now? He said, "Pray, ask and it shall be given; seek and it shall be knock and door shall be opened to you." Pray. So that prayer part is very very important. I don't joke with prayer. Prayer is very very important in this journey because you can't do it alone. There are times that you get tired, even at what you enjoy doing, because. You might just get tired and maybe you've achieved a milestone and be like, ah, who oh, let me rest? I have tried. No. That impact is very not there. People's lives are attached to yours. And you have to get to that place. Because if you don't get to that place, those people's lives that are attached to yours might not what? Might not come to fulfillment. So when you are doing something, don't do it for you alone. You are doing it for your family, you are doing it for your siblings, you are doing it for your generation, you are doing it for your friends. I think for people's lives that attach you, like I, the way I am now, that people's lives that attach to me. If I fail today, they will fail. If I succeed, they will succeed. If I do well, they will do well. Right? So, another number three, the third way of positioning yourself for a job is skills. Because when they want to hire you, or when you want to do something, one of the things that they will look at is your skills. Acquire the right skills. Know the skills to acquire and go all in. Learn that skill. Don't let laziness or how will I put it? What else stop people? Don't give up. It's it's not easy, right? It's not, it's not. But what at the end of that journey, we will smile if we what if we push through. So, do you have the required skills to land that job? Because every job, I, th- th- there's something with landing job. You see, in job, in you getting a job, what people don't understand, and the best the best person always win. The best wins that job. You can just imagine you're applying for a job where you guys are five hundred or hundred or fifty. They will pick the person. That is best. And how do you become the best person? By having the required skills. By having the required skills. Very, very important. So remember that when it comes to job, the best person is well. God factor and grace has a part to play in your job search. But you have to play your own part. But God, what? God has God will do. They will do his own. But you can't say what you won't do. It's not left for you to fill your own part. So so when I when I was so I said here that story about what kind of job I wanted. When I was in university, ah, I was like, am I going to be doing nine to five? Going to office to work, coming back, the stress and all that and all that. Ah. Well, so I said I needed a job that I don't even know. Even when I was on campus, I was sure freelancing, but I don't even understand what freelancing meant till I graduated. But before I graduated, I was like, I wanted a job where I can work from anywhere. I'm currently, I was in, um, if yesterday, currently I'm in Ibadan. I'm most likely, maybe, uh, maybe by next week, that is this next week I want to, I'll be in Lagos. And it doesn't stop my work. That is freelancing. So I told God, I said, this is kind of work that I want. Even though I don't understand what freelancing was that time. But along the way, there was some kind of one or two stuff. I started a business, then in Ife, and the business crashed. And uh, sometimes, sometimes, I do, Thank God. Oh, thank God that this business has because that business will, be, will have stressed me out. It will have stressed me and I won't be able to even... I may not really enjoy it. I'm enjoying what I'm doing now. Because what I'm doing now, sometimes I travel to the north. It doesn't stop me from working. I'll be anywhere. So far, my laptop, my laptop is with me here. My phone is here. Network is here. I'm delivering jobs. I'm working. The next thing, just for me to give you time that I'll deliver. It doesn't stop me. So I told God, oh, God, this is why I'm wrong. So when you are, if you are in school, maybe an undergraduate or and your finals, tell God the kind of job you want. If it's a job that will take you outside Nigeria, tell God. God will do it. Forget how it will happen. It will happen. That would that they, they got a job and they, 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 everything was financed from, everything was financed, their visa, passports. In fact, they got them laptop while they were, while they were in Nigeria. They got them laptop while they were seeing Nigeria to work and when it was time for them to come over, the company paid for it and they came over with their families. So tell God, there's nothing God cannot do. If there's the kind of job, the job that, if, tell God, God, the kind of job that I want is the one that will take me out of Nigeria. God will do it. It's now left for you to position yourself and work towards it. When I was there on camera, I was like, God, I want a job that I can work from anywhere. I don't know what freelance, so I was sure saying freelancing, freelancing, my part two, part three, part four. I was sure saying freelancing, freelancing, and I want to freelance. I'm a freelancer. I'm a chicken nickel. But with time, based on what I've told God, that's what I am today. This is three, four years after. I now understood what freelancing was. What I just want was flexibility. I don't want to be confined to a nine-to-five kind of stuff. I don't want to be confined to a location. I don't want to be 
like go come go come go come all those kind of stuff i don't really like it because i don't know i just don't i don't enjoy it so i told god god this kind of job i want and god so good the first job okay i i did my nyc at, at niger state even in niger state i think i was posted to a school uh i only spent three months in my ppa school then i'll come to ife i'll come and see my people in ife i'll go to, i'll go home sometimes i'll go and spend the month i have an uncle in abuja i will just go and it doesn't stop me from working i was still working all through that and uh, that all those traveling 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 stuff i was still working you get that kind of stuff so when i finished NYS, my uncle asked me to come to abg he has gotten a job for me with one um, commission or something like that although he called me i think i was i, I said about three months to go for my nyc then so he called me that by done. I said no, that I see about three months. He said there's a secretary job with one um somebody in Abuja, blah blah blah. I said I'm not done. So he had to give that job to another person. So nearly I finished my NYC. Like this, I just went to Abuja. I was in Abuja for about six months trying to. So that was when we tried several plaster. That was when there was embargo on government employment, trying to secure a government job, and then like that, that my uncle tried for me, tried so many ministry, need that need that is technology um agency under digital communication, ministry of digital communication. So many digital um, um, vacancies. He went to legislative quarters. He said, I have a brother. He needs a job, this blah, 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 blah. I've done my... I, I, I write CV, so I've done my CV. I've packaged everything. And I said, oh, sorry. There's an embargo. No, you know some HR. There's embargo on government employment. There's no employment now. Kinikon, kinikon, and all those things. And then it got to... One day I just saw... I, I Then I said, okay, let me start cryptocurrency. Then I saw a vacancy in one um, crypto company in Lagos, Lekki, Daba, as a social media. So I start, I applied for that job and I was interviewed and I got the job. And the beautiful thing, or why maybe why I applied was because I can work from anywhere. So I worked with that company for about two years before I left. So I was working, my own is close for me to deliver the social media strategies, content, and all those things, I would do it, deliver, and I would be paid. So that was what I told God when I was an undergraduate. So just tell God what you want. I don't know what is it that I want. I don't know the kind of job that I want. But see, God will do it. Forget. God will do it. So that was the kind of job that I wanted. And I was working with that company in two years. I was still doing some other side stuff like that. Freelancing, freelancing. I didn't you I don't work on up work down call that proposal, five hour, all those kind of stuff. Those places are kind of how will I put it? The proposal writing gets me off. So I, I did a kind of different form of freelancing. How was I able to do I put myself out there. I'll come there. So uh, how, so I work out so on my slide, you can see it work as a freelancer and journalist on campus, a lot of businesses, and I'm glad I did because I made a lot of mistakes on campus. But those mistakes shaped me when I graduated. And I found out, I said, okay, if I'm going to do something, if I will not see that in true, I will not start. Because part of the lessons I learned on campus so started vendor markets, a, a property business back then in part four, invested money, buying property and all those kind of stuff. And that business um, crashed. My partner pulled out and it was like, oh God, no Allah. I shall stop down. And I was in an office, the Tokes TV uh, stuff. And then I started building my audience from 50 to 70 to thousands of audience, right? I... I, I I started with just posting random content. I used WhatsApp because I understood WhatsApp very well. I know how to use it. I'm like, people are always online. How am I going to do, do this stuff? And I started, most of my audience then were my classmates and some um, church members, three to seven, and I continued. And there's anything that is very, very important in this, um, in this um, how would I put it? In this uh, journey is consistency. Whatever you start. Be consistent at it. Let people know you for one thing. Let people know you for one thing. When they mention your name, let your name bring that up. Like now, when you hear talks now, two things come to mind. Or one, depending on what the contact we had, two things. Either you see me as a job strategist or you see me as a brand strategist, helping you to market your brand, give you strategies that will drive audience. Or you see me or you see me as a job strategy, okay, you want to learn job. These are what you do. These are what to do. These are what to do. And all those kind of stuff like that. So consistency is very, very what important. So my number four point of job strategy is put yourself out there. So look at 16. He said, will you learn, light a lamp and put it under the table? No, let it come out. What are you ashamed of? 
you don't have money and you're shy, shy, you don't want to come out. You are broke and you don't want to come out. Come out, say, say what you have. What do you have? What is that skill? What is that talent? What has God given you? Look at people that got um the um the story of the um seven virgins, right? That was giving oil one okay, no, not the uh, seven virgins, the one that was giving ten shekel, two shekel, and all those stuff like that. And they went and some multiplied it, some hit their own, and some went, traded it and multiplied their shekels, they multiplied their coins. So put yourself out there. You don't have to be shy, don't don't send anybody. You have no business with anybody because if you go broke. But if you have no job, that person will not feed you. Those people will not feed you. Because I, I also face when I wanted to start to see in my past, I'll be like, ah. God. So I'll stop doing this when I'm at start to see you. Well, I don't, I'm a kind of person that if I want to do something, I just go all in. I don't care what you want to say. I don't care. That's my kind. I have that. I, I have that. Is this anything that I start even giving some kind of concern based on what people will think? I don't care what people will think. So far, I find fulfillment in what I'm doing. So if I find like I'm happy doing it, what anybody thinks or think concern me at all. It's left for you to keep thinking what you want to think or talk what you want to talk and all that. And then I started to see me. Probably like, ah, so I'll start to I'll start WhatsApp stuff. Because then WhatsApp, that WhatsApp was a trending stuff then. But I said, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it differently. And that was how I got into job. I didn't start with the job stuff. So like what I said when I started, just start. And with time clarity come, clarity will come in. And when I started the job stuff, I was like, ah. People are always asking me, do you want to, uh, do you want to review their CV? I have to go and learn how to write CVs, watch a lot of YouTube videos, took paid classes, pay someone to even teach me how to write it, how to do it. And with time, I developed more on what I learned. So put yourself outside there. Position yourself. That would have, by just putting yourself outside, job will come to you. Jobs what? We come to you. So don't say you don't want people to know you, yada, yada, but you are looking for a job. No, don't worry, we feed you. They will not be. Somebody just like one of my friends just may not be knowledgeable. Uh, may we not be a knowledgeable broke man. You have knowledge. You have skills. You have something to sell. You have something to sell to the world. You have something to impact to people. But you're hiding it. So you see, you are knowledgeable. You have talent, but you are broke. Knowledgeable broke man. May we not be a knowledgeable broke man in Jesus' name. So always do what's needed till you find your purpose. So people will do different things before they find that purpose. You will do a lot of things. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Ideating. Keep it rating. Till you finally get to where you want. And then you know that God. And at the end of the day, you thank God that God thank you. Now, all those things that you pass through are meant to teach you one lesson or the other. They are meant to position you to learn. The things that I learned in my past one to four are lessons that will stick with me forever. That if I'm starting on that brand, I know what to do and I know what not to do. I know this is what I should do. This is what I shouldn't do. If we start something, start. So consistency have a role to play in whatever it is you want to do. Do it with your long-term mindset. Don't do it that I want to start this job now. And then in the next three months, you want to stop and move to another one. Hello? That's wrong. Do it minimum five years. Give yourself a target. Give yourself a target. Three years. No, this stuff I want to do. I want to do it for three years. This stuff I'm doing, I want to do it for two years. And this way, I want to reach. I want to reach for five years. And then after I've done Tox TV, I was working with a company in Lagos. I was running Tox TV as a job platform. I was working with that company. Then recently, I've, I was like, okay, there's a new wave. And then people are dominating. The people that are dominating this new wave, let me put it at the bad guys in quotes. Christians can also play part in it. And then I went into Web3, learning crypto, Trading crypto, knowing the cases, landing jobs in crypto. I, I think I started crypto maybe a year or two. The people's perception about crypto, uh, crypto is scam. Crypto is fraud. Hello? It's not. I was even with a sister, I think, two days ago. And when I mentioned crypto, she's like, ah, crypto? Ah, no. Are you sure it's legit? I said it's legit. I can show you. It's 100% legit. Just that the part that is being publicized to people. You know, something, when something happens, we human beings, most of it, Part that we usually hear is the bad part. People don't usually preach the good part of something. There is a good part of crypto, and people are making it big there. And it's a revolution that is coming. Crypto is a revolution that is coming, whether we like it or not. Whether we like it or not, it's not just the way we um Facebook, Instagram, Twitter revolutionize the web two space. You know, we have web one, we have web two. The web three is blockchain. The web three is cryptocurrency. The web the um the web three. 
it means it's metaverse. And this is the mere evolution. So the earlier you position yourself, the better you enjoy it. So another strategy for learning on the side job is networking. You network with people in the niche you want to. You see, when I wanted to learn, um, do this social media, apply for social media, I network with social media guys. I'm always online, seeing how those influencers were doing it. I was seeing how they tweet, how they post, how they generate engagement, oh, how they post, how they do and all those kind of things, the things they say and all those kind of stuff. So I started learning those stuff. I started networking with those people. Because those people that you are within, those, those people that you network, that people that will refer you when the opportunity comes. That's not just saying, you just say, um, I got your number from social person. He recommended the uh, social media strategies. Or they helped me to develop my brand. He helped me to do this. He helped me to do that. Networking. Go to events. Pay, go for paid, if, both paid and free. Pay for classes and all those things. Network with people. Speak out. Tell people that this is what you want. Like uh, the former, the speaker I just finished speaking said, said close not is it close this thing? And it's truth. So speak out. Tell people what you want. And talk with people. Don't just stay and hide your own shell and think the opportunity to come to you. No. Network. Put yourself outside there. Is if you can't go to an event, there are many online forums, there are many groups, there are many channels. We have Twitter, we have LinkedIn, we have Facebook, we have Instagram. And a lot of places like that, that you can uh, talk with other people that you might not make them, maybe you guys might not be in the same room, but online has given you the opportunity to what? To network with those people, make important, when they post, engage their posts, make important comments, brilliant comments, so that you'll be noticed. When I wanted to go into HR, I was already uh, talking to Benny Dipo. Until I just, like, when I reviewed my stuff, I told you guys, I always do review. When I am like, no, it's 9 to 5, I don't want it again. I don't want to go deep into it again. I've already, I attended a Ben Depot's class, both paid and free. If I see a Ben Depot on any space or any event, I will go there. I want to listen to him. I want to hear how his journey works. Because, you know, a Ben Depot is the owner of BTDT. It's a job, a job CV resume writing class. You know that one of the people that I look up to, that are modeling my brand to us as well. So when I when I noticed a Ben Depot and some other folks, but a Ben Depot was number one in my life. I was the one doing the kind of stuff I am doing. So I watched him, I see his content, I see how he speaks, I attend his paid classes, if he had a paid class, I will attend, and all, all those kind of stuff. And I was getting close to him. That's all that kind of stuff. So another um, strategy, you know, another strategy or the tool that you need for this job stuff is your CV. Your CV is very, very important. Have a good annotated CV because you don't know when it might be requested. And then your CV, one of the mistakes that people make when writing CV is that they just do CV one CV they use for different jobs. No, that's wrong. A CV to a job. You want to apply for a social media manager, use one CV for that one. You want to apply for a developer, don't use one CV. You use that one CV for an admin. You use it for a social media manager, you use it for a, for a developer. You want to be a pharmacist, you use it and apply for a pharmacist role. No, that's wrong. A CV. And this is the reason why you should tailor your CV towards it. You see, the skills and responsibilities that is required of a developer or a digital marketer, or a manager, or an admin officer. The skills and responsibilities are different. Totally different. So you can't expect that. I usually give you this example. Okay, just imagine that. Two people are looking for jobs. Now you are the HR. The first person, maybe the job role is uh, maybe digital marketer. And the first person CV is just there. The person puts everything, just put everything. Digital marketing is there. Social media is there. Coding is there. It shall pour everything. It shall pour everything. No keywords. Nothing, nothing. It shall pour everything that uh, any job that come out of using the CV for. You'll be stressed out. And then there's a second person. So he saw the digital marketing role and, and he took his CV and he went online and he said for keywords, the kind of a digital marketer. Even if you don't start for a keyword, if it's your niche, you know the keywords. Ability to handle all this Facebook, Instagram marketing. Ability to SEO, SEM, Content generation and all those things, all those, those are the keywords that you need as a one as, as, as that you're going to be, um, that are going to use to employ as data marketer. Now, you pick those keywords and you put them inside your CV, and then you submitted it. That is the second person now. So, you submitted the CV. Now, we have two CVs here one person CV is just there, every role is there. Why the second person CV is sailor towards that role? If you are the HR, who are you going to pick? Definitely, you are going to pick the second person because that person's CV mirrors the what you want. And if you don't know the keywords to use at the time when you are writing for a CV, pick the job description. 
check the skills that they said, okay, this person must know how to do this, he must know how to do A, he must know how to do B. Pick those things and insert them into the CV that you are writing. The responsibility, look at the responsibility related to what you've done and then edit it and make it be tailored to the responsibility of what you have done in your previous place of work or what you have helped your client to do. Basically, make sure your CV is tailored. Daba, when I applied for Daba, I only applied once. I was picked. There are other jobs that have applied. I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't. I, I didn't. Um, I, I, like, I didn't follow through. So when you see a job, make sure your CV is well tailored towards that job. And there are two kind of CV. You see, the CV that you use for a job is different from the one that you use for academic. You can't use it because that job, that CV for the job is different. Is a is a job CV. Academic CV is academic based. Is academic based. Right, it, 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 the CV job for the job uh, academic CV, for instance, if you have your CGPA, if you have your project, if you have the courses, if you have maybe you have a, maybe you have published a a content before or project or all those things or volunteer and all those things, it will be in your in your academic CV for the job CV. We don't need to know the course you want, you studied. You have no business with the, your project topic in the job CV. There's no what they want is your experience, the skills. And then how well you are able to sell yourself in the profile summary, right? How well you are able to sell yourself as well. So make sure your CV is always tailored for the job. Because if you even want CV for all the job, you'll be stressed out. You'll be stressed because you will not get reply. Always remember that the best person always wins. So position yourself very, very well when you're applying for a job. Don't apply for all the jobs. You, you get tired. Make sure that the job that you're applying for is job that yes. You can tailor your CV to us, and you mirror that rule exactly. Because some companies, some big companies, when they are when they are recruiting, like big four companies now, it's no human being that's in those CV. They have a software that we call ATS, African Tracking System. If your CV doesn't contain the keywords that that company is looking for, in your if your CV doesn't contain those keywords, your CV will not even get to the HR. The software will screen it out. I've written a lot of CVs for, for people that apply for big force. Deloitte, PNG, uh, Shell, Oando, and all those companies like that. So you tailor your CV and look at the keyword. What the company said, okay, they're looking for a human resource. You must have a, you must be able to, um, you must have payroll skills, how to calculate payroll, conflict management, admin, and all those things like that. Microsoft Office leadership skills and all those things like that. They will, be, they will set it there. So pick those skills, everything. Put it in your CV. Don't just put it anyhow. There's how you, you understand. Put it strategically in such a way that when your CV goes through the applicant tracking system, if you pick, your CV will pick, and the applicant tracking system will pick those keywords. If the keywords match what is in the applicant tracking system, that is that software that the company is using, your CV will pass to the second stage of what the application, and then you will be called for interview. And when you get to interview as well, sell yourself very well. Read about the company. Know so much about the company know so much about your job role, the deliveries. And when you're writing your CVs, make sure you use numbers. Quantify it. Quantify your achievements. Quantify the, your, your activities. Use numbers. You understand? Use numbers. Don't just write it like you're writing a novel or you're writing a write-up. Use numbers. Impute numbers into your CV. It makes the CV um, it makes the CV interesting to read. Not just writing sentences, blah, blah, blah. Use it. Use numbers. If you work with a team of five, people that we work with it shows that you have collaborative skills. It shows that you have team more skills. Oh, you have them to drive sales by 60%. Before, it was 40. You drove it up. You bring in so, so, and so strategy. And it's bring about maybe 100% cooperation in the place of work. Use numbers on your CVs. Then LinkedIn. Another place that you can position yourself is on LinkedIn. Make sure your LinkedIn is optimized. I'm sure the previous guy talking about it. Talk about your editing, your profile picture, your the work experience, your summary. Your summary. Make sure your CV is also tailored as well. Uh, your LinkedIn, rather. Make sure your LinkedIn is also tailored. So let me stop here for a while and let me see if I have a quest, any question before I proceed to the last part of my presentation. I'm sorry, you can still continue. So after you're done with everything, will be, all the questions will be attended to oh. then. All right, sir. All right, sir. All right, thank you. So online platforms... Now, can you hear me, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So, online platform. 
what is the online platform? Um, well, one of the things that sells online is your branding. How you position yourself? What do people know you for? So, and number one thing for online platform is your personal brand, your personal branding. So, personal branding is what you are known for. In my case, then you hear I'm talks now. You know, job and CV comes to mind. Even though I'm trying to twist that narrator now, I'm trying to move into crypto. I'm trying to move into crypto because currently I'm working for some crypto companies even. So, I'm trying to twist into crypto. I'm trying to bring a lot of people into the crypto space as well, not just me. But like I said, your life is not just about you. It's about other people, people like that are actually yours. So when I got in, I, I said I'm going to bring a lot of people to it because this is the new um stuff. It's not a Chinese syndrome, but I'm here to play it for a long time. I'm not just doing it that for now, even though there are so many intricacies, the risk and all that. But it's something that is the future. Because I can see company and um, countries, big companies going into it. You do what? You move too. When the world is moving, you don't just stay where you are. You move be tight. If not, you become obsolete. So make sure that you are flexible, be fluid like water. When something is moving, you you understand. So personal brand is about your content, not pick packaging or picking it, picking it to make it because you'll be tested. So make sure you have content as well in your branding. So you'll be tested and you'll be, you need to show results or evidence. If not, you keep explaining. So make sure you have enough evidence. Work show and all that then online platform and that's after branding is your niche niche down don't just do everything pick a niche and go down onto that so pick a niche you can't do everything be known for one thing right then diversify then another thing is my third point for online platform is sales and marketing don't sell yourself short sell yourself well sell value and results you have sell the value and results you have achieved on your journey people are interested in what in what you have done the mountains you have moved and all that. Sell yourself well. Sell yourself because whether I like it or not, you are selling yourself online. You are selling what you are doing. So position yourself. That personal brand is very important. Every people you know have a very good profile picture, your content, what you dish out, and all those stuff. Let it be something that people can relate to it. And then let people know you for good stuff, most importantly. So choose your platform. Pick a pick a platform and build there. For me, I pick WhatsApp and Twitter. Pick it was a platform, and your, the platform should be platform that that will strengthen you. You understand that will put um how would I put it? That will put your content out there. For instance, if it's, if you are if you are someone that likes doing video, right? You should be on TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. If it's writing, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Medium, Mirror, writing. Those are the writing platforms. Twitter, for instance, pay people now to develop content. When you write, and your writing is very, you write very well, and you generate a lot of comments. At the end of the month, Twitter will pay you. You see? So, pick a platform that goes along. Just put, even if you don't have audience yet, keep putting out your content. Consistency with time will be noticed, and what people will follow you. There are people that want what you have. There are people that want to buy what you are selling. There are people that want the content that you have, that you are dishing out. Right? So, pick a platform and build there. And build there, be consistent, be consistent, be consistent. Most important, don't just start, stop, do today, tomorrow, or a week, you stop, next week, you continue. No, do it on and on. Whether you, uh, whether you're enjoying it or not, keep doing it, keep finding strength, keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. And before you know it, very soon, results will come, and you have the evidence or the result to show for what you are doing. Because if you don't do it, results will not come. If you don't do it, you don't have evidence. You understand that kind of stuff. So, another platform where it, uh, some platforms where let me just mention this: the platform where you can get jobs include LinkedIn, Twitter, Upwork, Indeed.com, Jora and Seek. You see, this Jora and Seek, they are most of most of the companies they are international companies. Indeed.com, we have Indeed for Nigeria, we have for UK, US. Um, Upwork to international companies, although now it is everywhere. We have international companies, we have Nigerian companies on Upwork as well. Twitter networking and all that too and then linkedin optimization and like the previous speaker just spoke you network and get people's content and all those kind of stuff so thank you very much i think i am done now thank you wow 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 um thank you so much sir can we celebrate him can we just celebrate him Drop the emoji, celebrate him. Can we say thank you so much, sir, for the enlightenment? Thank you so much, sir. 
Okay, so even in the comment section, you can drop. Can hear you, sir. Not that touch you so much. Okay, can you hear me, sir? I hope you can hear me now. Yes, we can hear you now. Okay. So I said, um, let's drop the comment of the experts that really touch you so much. I think for me, it is um, may we not be in a vegetable group, man. So. So um, that that was that was an insightful one. Thank you so much, sir. So, if you have any question, you can raise your hand and also drop in the comment section. If you have any question, um, okay. So I guess one person is having a question. So, Mister Ojo, you can, or do is anyone having a question? Any question? Any question? Any question? Okay. So, uh, Mr. Regbeshola, you can you can unmute your mic. Uh, uh, good morning, sir. Please, I wanted to ask the last thing you said when you were listing the job, the places you can get job offers from. After I said Twitter and Indeed and LinkedIn, you said something like dollar. I didn't really get whether it's dollar you said or something. No, it's Jora. J -O no, it's Jora. J-O-R-E. Okay, Jora. We have six. All list of the app. All list of the app, yeah, app on Play Store. Seek, S-E-E-K. So I'm still waiting for a comment in the, so I'm still waiting for some of the quotes that you learned in the comment session while we go through the question. So someone also said, um, Gospel Africa said, your job should earn you a living and also give you fulfillment. Your job should earn you a living. All right, so um, any further question? Any further questions? Do you have any other questions? Okay, in the absence of money, can we celebrate our entire We actually can hear your voice. I don't know what's wrong with your audio. Can we hear me? Is it clear now? He's not clear actually. Wow. Okay, is it better now? Yeah, it's better. Okay, so I'm asking do anyone have any other question? I think somebody okay, is mighty. You can unmute your mic and I can. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Kukumbo. And integrating your, your knowledge in Web2 into the Web3 markets and, you know, performing some transactions on the crypto branch, on cryptocurrency and, you know, the blockchain entirely. And uh, I, I believe you agree with me that, you know, we are currently in the Bay market and uh, it is very rare to, currently, you know, it's very rare to see projects that, you know, are ready to add liquidity to the market. I mean, even those who are trading futures and um, doing those sort of things on the cryptocurrency market, you know, everything is kind of silent right now. So, what would you advise, you know, someone to do, you know, for someone who does not trade and um, what other opportunities are there, you know, in the Web3 space currently in this bear market, you know, opportunities that will benefit people in this bear market apart from trading? All right, sir. Thank you for that question. So, uh, yeah, we are in bear market and everywhere is silent. There's no liquidity and even the engagement is down. So one of the things I can do in this period is to look for jobs. They are still come, they are still projects they are still building and they're looking for ambassadors and they'll pay you some dollars at the end of the month or they'll pay in their tokens and number two another thing i can do after, aside from looking for jobs but most importantly look for jobs so that that job will be able to provide you with liquidity 
for you to invest when the bull market comes. Secondly, another thing that you can do at this point for you to understand um, to study the market well because crypto is something that changes every day. Every day there is new innovation. Web three changes you can see. If you go off a week in the web three space, by the time you're coming back, everything will look new. You have to start refreshing your brain. So one of the things that you can do in this period with low engagement is for you to master and understand the markets, understand the blockchain, understand crypto very well. Because it's not something I can finish out. New, new, every day, new projects, new ideas, new innovation, new stuff are building. So this is the time to study it and understand it. Because whatever you learn now is something that will be useful for any bull market comes. And then for you to position yourself for the opportunity that is coming. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, sir, for that. So that's um, a, an introduction to what did you So if you have interest, you can do what to just do a whole lot of research, background research, to be able to accurately position yourself for that. Okay, so even if you see in the progression of uh, the learning, it comes from um, LinkedIn optimization, then how to position yourself for jobs. And so even furthermore, we are still going into uh, the last session of um this morning so um before that we um even in the linkedin optimization we learned um there are three positions the technical professional and the also the experiential knowledge so we must even be able to connect okay for example someone that is a content writer now and then uh let's say you are in the field you study maybe medicine so in that area now your content if you are, most of your writings should still be connected to medicals because it's still, it will give you an edge over other people because you still, uh, it's a career path and also a professional aspect. So we should still find um, a connection in between um, the career path and also the technical path. And so we should be consistent with um, that which we have. We shouldn't be just everywhere. That's why, even as a content, I shouldn't just go there go here just be consistent with that which you have so thank you so much can we celebrate our speaker once again i will say thank you so much sir all right thank, thank you. you so much sir. We really yeah. appreciate you, sir. thank you sir thank you for the opportunity thank you sir thank you sir all right so um how many of us is enjoying the session so so far So currently now we are going forward to the last session for this morning. So how many of us is happy to hear that? So the gradually gradually the bootcamp is coming to an end. So um, I'll be reading the recitation of the last speaker for this morning session. So um, uh, this session is um, majorly to help us understand how to write, how to prepare a CV. So how to write the CV, you know, even from the session we just finished, we thought you must learn how to write the CV, how to um, sell yourself even in your CV. So we'll be having Mr. Samuel Ojo from UK, who will be um, speaking on how to write CV. So I'll be reading his recitation um, shortly. So let's do what to pay attention to it. So Samuel Ojo is a distinguished graduate with a degree in management and accounting, has enhanced his talent and experience across a diverse array of ventures to shape what constitutes a winning resume. With an exceptional track record, Samuel has consistently excelled in the dynamic field of fintech. He had successfully navigated the challenges of the Nigerian startup ecosystem, contributing his skills to three leading fintech startups. Presently, Samuel holds the esteemed role of a commercial finance analyst within a multinational enterprise situated in the United Kingdom. His wealth of experience spans multiple geographical contexts, granting him a comprehensive understanding of what it takes to stand out in the world of professional employment. As an alumnus of CSE Mountbatten, Samuel Ojo has woven himself into the fabric of leadership and service his dedication to enhancing his surroundings is manifested in his multifaceted roles within the better community, serving as an integral member of the choir, publicity, welfare, and drama unit, as well as fulfilling the roles of Fudge Town All Representative Coordinator and Undergraduate Coordinator. Samuel's commitment to contributing positively to his environment is undeniable. 
His involvement extends far above the realms of his academic pursuits, underlining his commitment to personal and communal growth. Samuel's passion for impact extends to the society as a whole. He initiated and superheaded a transformative a transformative project known as Project Waek. Though this endeavor, he has through, through this endeavor, he has facilitated the payment of Waek fees for more than 263 students within two years, thereby enabling them to access educational opportunities that would have otherwise been beyond their reach. Now, despite his finance-focused inclinations, Samuel finds some fulfillment in resume crafting. This has led him to assist friends and peers in reshaping their CVs, providing invaluable insights into the key component of writing of winning a resume. His unique vintage point as both a finance expert and a resume proofreader grants him a comprehensive perspective on what truly really makes a CV shine. Samuel is happily married to Bumi Ojo, a Bethel alumnus as well. So um, we're a clapping emoji with a standing ovation. Join me, welcome, Mr. Samuel Ojo from UK. You're welcome, sir. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you very much. Um, good morning, everyone. Good morning, <laughs> sir. Um, good morning. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much. Um, when, awesome. when you were reading the citation, even I, I was like, what's going on? I was also dropping emojis <laughs> with everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sorry, am I supposed to um, um, on my camera or can I put that up? Yes, sir. It should be on, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, All right. OK, so once again, um, let me share my screen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning, um, ladies and gentlemen. I want to say good morning, guys, yeah. but I I can see some names. <laughs> oh, I can see some names here that are like my mom, my senior people while I was around. I can't say good morning, guys. Yet. I can't. Yeah. So thank you very much for having me. Um, I think this is the first time um, I'll be having a session like this with um, BYF since I graduated in. I think 2016, 2017. I was the undergraduate coordinator and I handed over to our able president, uh, Mr. Sepat, who has carried on the work of the Lord since then. And um, yeah, since when, since when I left Bethel, I've, I've kept in touch um, with a lot of uh, Bethel brothers and sisters, of course. So, cars, I can see the um, sister here, Demiliki. Sorry. Yeah, I can I can see her name here. Um, a lot of my Edom, bro, um, bro, Wolu Wale, um, bro, Banky, a lot of people actually. And because the color actually like impacted a lot into me while I was around. So, why, bro, um, this, this speaker before we were speaking, when he went into CV and he started talking about, um, um, the CV part are like God. This bro has already talked about everything I want to talk about. <laughs> I can move my to by. But yeah, we have to like do what we have to do. And yeah, I'll, I'll begin sharing my screen very shortly. So, so we can see. When we can when we see the screen, please let me know. What can we see, please? Yeah, we can see the screen now. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So today I'll be talking about crafting effective resumes. And um, um, oh, before I start, so I can see that I have 40 minutes for this conversation. Um, I don't talk much. I was actually thinking it was 15, 20 minutes. So I didn't prepare a long slide, but I'll, I'll just keep an eye on my time and I'll be as detailed as possible. All right, sir. No problem, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Yeah. So the content, what does a CV mean? Difference between a CV and resume. Why it's important to craft a good CV, essentials of a good CV, and things to avoid in your CV. So what does a CV mean? Basically, a CV is a document that details your best qualities as they relate to the open to the open rule. So just um, a document that shows who you are, what you've done, what you have, what you offer, what you bring to the table as it relates um, to the particular rule 
that was advertised for that you are applying for. Also, a typical CV shows your professional history, your academic background, and your key skills. So your CV is not your CV is not showing everything like that you've done or like everything about your life. No, it's just showing like um, specific experiences, specific skills as you relate to um, what you've done, as you relate to um, what you can bring to the job. So most times CV, so people usually ask that what is the difference between a CV and a resume. I use them interchangeably. A lot of people use them inter interchangeably. In the UK as well, it's used um, interchangeably. In fact, I think CV is used most times for more than resume. Yeah, it's just in the US. Yeah, in the US, they use more resume. And um, in the US as well, they use, they use, they call, they, they, they distinguish between resume and CVs. But most times when they talk about CVs, they are talking about um, academic CV as in the academic context because an academic CV, the way it's structured, it's quite different from um, the normal CV that you use for job applications, right? So there is almost no, dist no distinction between um, a CV and resume. It's basically used interchangeably. But I use I call I call my CV. I don't I don't really say resume much. We use UK English in Nigeria, so mostly say CVs. Yeah. And um, one thing to also note is that there is no universal template for a good CV. So some people will say, oh, this is how your CV must look exactly like this, or your CV must not look exactly like this, all those kind of things. No, there are different variations of what a good CV looks like. Some people will put, we arrange their CV as um, their personal information first, their skills, their experience, and um, say their hobbies. Some people would start with personal information, their experience first, their education next, their skills. Some people start with personal information for their education and qualification first, um, next, their experience and stuff. So there's no universal templates. You can bring 10 excellent candidates together. You can bring 10 different people that applied for a job, but I haven't got a job. And um, you see that they all have different formats of CV. As far as the CV is clean, as far as the CV is good, um, there's no like one template basically that fits all for a CV. All right, so why is it important um, to have a good CV? So one of the major reasons why we need to have a good CV is first impression. You know, the, IR, the hiring manager or the recruiter does not know you. They only know you from what- I'm sorry, like. I'm sorry to put you off, sir. Your slide is not moving, like it's oh. not changing. Oh, are you serious? Wow. Um, let me see what I can do. Yes, sir, it's right now. What can you see? What can you currently see? Can you let me know? Why is it important to have a good CV? And it, okay, I said it's not moving. Oh, okay. No, it just moved. But you stopped sharing now. Okay, hold on, please. Let me... Let me do this again. It could be network. Or let, maybe I should even share my entire screen itself. I think that will probably do the trick. Let's try this. How is my screen now? Yes, sir. Is it moving? Yes, sir. It's moving, sir. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. So why is it important to um, have a good CV? So like I was saying, um, your CV is the first impression that any hiring manager or any recruiter or any team lead will have of you. So it's very important to like have a, first, a good first impression because if you have a shabby CV, it tells a lot on the kind of person you are. It also means you're probably a shabby person. If you can't put in a lot of work and detail into crafting a good CV, it also means that you are probably not um you are not you're not ready to like do the work of when you get the job. So, so that is one of the reasons why it's like having the CV to create a first impression. Um, another reason is because you are not the only one applying for the jobs, right? 
there are other top candidates as you know applying for the job and one of the things that will stand you out or the major thing if the first thing that we won't stand you out will be like how your cv is like what you put in your cv how your cv is arranged and stuff then the third reason so there's a stat that says only 11 percent of applicants are considered suitable for the roles they are applying for so basically it's not because the remaining candidates are not excellent or are not good but because the way their cv has been structured the hiring manager does not deem it fit or does not think um they are suitable for the job so say like 100 people are applying for a job and the hiring manager thinks maybe only just 11 people are good enough right to, to get that job so that is one of the reasons why we also like need to have a good cv so that we can stand out from the rest of the crowd Another reason, um, brought up mentioned in the last speaker before me, applicant tracking system. So a lot of companies um, for some years now have been using this software, this applicant, this ATS, where um, the CV is not reviewed by a person. So you send in your CV, because there are a lot of people applying for the jobs, the software basically just filters through the CV, checks for the keyword on your CV as it relates to the job. Um, to the job rule or to the job description. So maybe you're applying for the role of an accountant. The CV, the, the ATS will be looking at, oh, does, does this person have um, um, accounting skills? Does this person have Excel skills? Or does this person have any professional qualification? Does he have ICANN? Does he have ACC? All of that. So, so uh, that is how we basically things like structure our CV in such a way, right, that it, uh, aligns with the job role or the job description that has been advertised then the um, last one industry research states that on average recruiters spend six to eight seconds looking at your cv so um if you have this shabby cv if your cv is not properly structured or not properly arranged a recruiter will just basically they just glance through it okay what is on this document and if what is there if it doesn't catch their eye if it doesn't catch their fancy within six seconds within eight seconds they just throw it in the bin or they just like move it out of their face and go to the next thing so that is why it's like very important for us to like uh, present a good document or a good cv when we are applying for different um, job roles or different applications okay essential of a good cv um, basically, this this is basically um, what a good CV should contain, or some of the important things, details that a good CV should have. So the first one is your personal information. So if a good CV, if that should be the fourth thing, a personal information basically is your name, your address, your email, um, your phone number, and maybe your like LinkedIn address. All of these are they, they have reasons. We we can't just put in different personal information. Um, and also. So your name should be there, preferably in capital letter. Um, your, I think in Nigeria, it's arrange your surname first, your first name, and your middle name. I think in the UK, it's just first name, your surname, and your third name. Then your email address. Your email address should be an email address you're proud of. I, I, at this stage, I believe most of us already know that there are some email address that you can't be using for the applications. When I was in part two, when I had my first CV, I did my I had my first CV when I was in part two, second semester. My email address was Sammy Sky95. Does not make sense. Apple drop, which was was Sammy Sky. So I'm post email address would be Sammy for Life or or Dockers for Life or Dockers Forever. Or you know all those kind of or odd Dockers. Okay. Sorry, I'm using Dockers, I know Dockers. <laughs> so funny, funny email. So no, you can't do that. Your email address should be normal one. Should contain your name at least. My name is Ojo Samuel. My email address is Ojo Samuel for PME. I feel that was too long. I tweaked it back. I use Sam Ojo okay, at gmail.com. Basically, your name so that um, the recruiter is not looking at your email address and looking at your name and wondering what is going on. Why is Sammy Sky Life or Sammy for Life doing on this um, CV? That kind of thing. So, your phone, your phone number should be there because. If they need to call you, um, it should be easy to reach. Your contact address as well should be there. Now, it's important to have the right address 
So I, I noticed there was a time some of my friends were applying for jobs and they were quite intelligent um, first class graduates. But the major reason why they weren't getting called up was because of their address. So you can't be applying for jobs in Lagos or jobs that are resident in, say, Lekki or VI, and your address is saying Ife or your address is saying Open States or your address is saying Kaduna. The recruiter will look at you like, how do you want to um, get to? How do you want to be coming to work, or how do you want to work on your relocation? So what I did after I left, I was based in my parents were building some water when we left, and I was applying for jobs in Lagos, you know, on the island. I had to use the address of one of my friends that in Ikeja. Now that I got a job, and then I think one of my friends that was in school there as well. Yeah, so use an address that aligns with the location you're applying to. It's important. You can be applying to jobs in Lagos, and your address is saying if it may work for you, right? Like I said, there's no one one size fit all but uh, it's usually advised to use the right address your phone number as well should also carry the your your um what they call that in international code plus two three four eight zero diseases and all you don't just use zero nine zero because you may also want to apply for jobs um, overseas abroad and they won't know what's zero eight zero or zero eight one or zero nine zero or the right so just use like what plus two three four if you're in UK plus four four, I think US is plus one or something. So you can do all of that. Um and your LinkedIn address too. Your LinkedIn address as an IPA link is also advised so that um, the recruiter can easily check out your LinkedIn page if you have one. If you don't have a LinkedIn page, it's advised to of course create one. If you don't have it don't, there's no need to put it there, of course. But if you have it, just like put the IPA link. So that they can easily click on it and take them straight to your LinkedIn page. So another um, um, part of um, a good CV is the professional summary. So the professional summary is just like after your um, that's like the template I use. That's the format I basically use for my own CV, and I, and I know that it works because I got a template from a senior colleague that used the template to get jobs into Bank of America and um, different top um, agencies, General Electric, different companies like that. So I basically stuck with it with some adjustments, iterations, updates, and it's worked for me over the years. So a summary basically just say, um, that talks about maybe like two, three lines that talk about what you, what you are or who you are, what you've done. Or say you can see something like an innovative team leader or team player, who is passionate about um, the space software development or um, um, creating websites or designing websites, something something like that that just like explains a bit of who you are, so the hiring manager can have an insight on uh, what you are interested in or what you are enthusiastic about. Or a finance person, say an innovative individual enthusiastic or passionate about the accounting, treasury, reconciliation, finance, modeling, financial reporting, all of that. It's, it also works. It also like, just gives them an insight into um, um, who you are and what you're doing. Um, also, your experience, a good CV definitely have the experience. So uh, most times students will usually say they don't have professional experiences, but we, we know that's not true because you, you can get professional experience from anywhere from your mom's shop that's usually the trick that most of us fall back on i use my i use my mom's business i think she was into catering then i called myself a business development analyst and what was my what was my role then i think i said i was marketing doing marketing for her i was preparing her books and i was giving her like business insights just package it my mom doesn't have a business name by call that business Sarah Catering Services. Even she does not know what that is because she's never heard of that before. Well, it, it, I mean, it has to like sound like a business thing, and you have to like package it in a way that um, that makes sense to the person reading it. Don't exaggerate it, of course, because you know that this person is lying, <laughs> and that won't be good. But just like you have experiences in professional um, organizations you belong to in school. Right, even if you if you work in better, that was an experience that you can definitely put that um, on your CV. Um, your education and your qualifications and also your trainings should also be on your CV. 
because um, as it aligns to the role of course to your education so for students now that don't have much professional experience they usually like invest more in this education part so just your secondary school and, and your university yeah secondary school university or just your university is okay when i when i was in school because i didn't have experience i put in my university i put in the courses i did because if i'm applying for an accounting role i need to show that i did some accounting courses so i put in stuff like i did courses like um, financial reporting econometrics um, statistics yeah statistics and a lot of governance risk compliance all of that i put all of that in the courses i was also doing in my icon i put all of that in my qualifications i put the fact that um, i'm right i was writing my icon exam ACA in view that was the trick we used then and it works it works yeah then um your skills so this is very important very very important because a lot of us actually um, um downplay this part but if your CV is going to be going through an applicant tracking system, you're going to be looking out for all of these things. So if you skills like, say, proficient in, okay, we're not proficient because let's not lie, as students, a lot of us are not proficient and nobody expects you to be proficient. And just put basic knowledge in uh, Microsoft Excel, or communication skills, interpersonal skills, team management skills, um, what, what else? I think report development skills, you know, generic skills that soft skills that um, companies want people to have should also be on your CV. Don't downplay it, it's very important. Um, I manage to part for this. The, the ATS also like picks all of this and they may just kick your CV out if it doesn't align with some of the skills um, they are looking for. Um, okay, others. So others basically include, because I didn't want to like type a lot of things, others basically include things like your hobbies, if you have space on your CV, hobbies. So careful about the hobbies you put on your CV. You don't just put, when people are going to write, like playing Sui, or like playing Tete, or skipping, you know, obvious, obvious that, <laughs> that don't like create curiosity in the mind of the, the recruiter. So put hobbies that make sense, researching skills, I mean, that makes sense for researching skills. But even playing football or watching football is actually an hobby. If you can talk about it, of course. Some people put reading. Please don't put reading if reading is not your hobby. Because if you cannot put reading now, you're reputated. Oh, you read books. What type of books do you read? And you start saying, Ali and I mean, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. So put hobbies that, um, that you can talk about. So, like I said, the, 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 um, my senior colleague that that actually um, helped me with my CV while I was in part two. In his final Bank of um, America's interview that he had, I think the interview was about 20 minutes. After introducing himself to the interviewer, a white guy, obviously, talking about himself, his skills, and the guy just went to his hobby and said, oh, you're a Manchester United fan. And they basically just started talking about Manchester United for the, for like the major part of the interview. And that was one of the reasons why I got the job. The guy just liked it. Of course, it's a place of favor as well. You know, that's just favor. That's favor. Of course, the guy is intelligent, he's smart, right? But when the interview the interviewer leaves like the technical areas of what we should be talking about, and you are able to like draw them into what you want them to be talking about, it's also a skill that uh, can also be properly managed. So put skill. Imagine the guy puts that is the man you find. And he doesn't know anything about man, he doesn't even watch football. How does he want to defend that? Like they will basically train out of the interview. So all these, your references as well, if you have space, all of these things if you have space. I don't have my reference to my CV currently, but but um, when I started out after I left school, I had references, but I didn't put the names of my reference. I just put um, um what was that thing we always put? Um, references available on requests. So that if you need referees, or if you need to reference, you, know, you can always go back to them. Your reference could be your lecturers, could be um, um, anyone, anyone that is working that could put in a good work for you or a good, a good work for you. So your hobbies, your interests, your um, um, what I say, hobbies, interests, your referees, 
your volunteer experience as well. Yeah, what's yeah, volunteer experience is actually very important too. Because if you belong to say like um volunteer organizations like ISEC, like GCI on campus, it's actually very important or recommended to like put all of that on your CV, like Red Cross, because your interviewer may also be someone from that um, belongs to one of those organizations, and that will basically be the edge that um, will stand you out from other candidates. It worked for me. I belonged to ISEC when I was in school, and I think the second job I got, the guy was an ISEC, and he's like, oh, ISEC, hey, ISEC, I think what's up or something. And I was like, yeah, and I got the job like that. It's not because, it's not because, it's not like I was incompetent, so of course, my CV made sense too, but basically because, I belong to ISEC and it was able to like see one or two things I did with ISEC. It was able to like um, give me the job. And so all of, all of those subtle, subtle things, they uh, also work as well. Um, things to avoid on your CV, excessive personal information. I think I'm running behind time now, so I'll try and like brush this up. Excessive personal information. So some people put things like their gender, their age, their local government. Um, um yeah gender age local government primary school you know on their cv and all of that nobody really cares about all of those information nobody cares about the primary school you went to or your gender or your age in fact if i could even work against you because the age requirement for the job may just be maybe between 20 22 to 27 or something now you are putting that you are 28 29 years then nobody asks you that automatically disqualifies you and it creates some sort of bias, your state of origin. Nobody cares about your state of origin. Create some bias. You don't need to put that on your CV. Yeah, things to avoid a lengthy CV. As a student, you should probably you should probably have a one-page CV. Or as a fresh graduate, you should probably have a one-page CV. Most advisable. Even people with multiple, multiple years of experience, I say them with say two pages, two pages CV, or maybe max three pages. But at standard um, page of CVs, usually one to two page. Don't have a length page CV, usually in Word or PDF format. I use PDF format, but what format is also accepted by the ATS um, software. So I recommend PDF format. Inconsistent font and spacing. Um, like I see, your CV should be well structured, should be well arranged. The fonts should be the same throughout. Don't be using different fonts. Or if you're using bold, use bold for specific instances. So you're boldening the name of the company, or um, yeah, not don't just bold in anything. Don't just space it anyhow. Yeah, everything should be well aligned. It should be attractive to the eyes, basically. Put it, put the dates of your um, of your experiences. So if you work in a place between January to June 2022, put it there. So the the period of like the period you work there lack of details that match the rules so the previous speaker also spoke on this you can't be applying for um a software development role and you're using an accounting cv you're talking about icon you're talking about financial reporting it, it, they, they will probably pick out or pick up other cvs that match that rule so make sure that if what i if i what i even advise people do is look at the job description look at the skills look at some of what is on the job rules see if you have all of those skills and try and structure that into your CV. So what I do, I have a general CV that contains all of my skills and all of that. And I have specific CVs that I also use to apply for. If I say that, oh, I like this rule and I really want to get it right, structure my CV in a way that the skills on that job description, on that ad, I put it in my CV, um, if I have it, of course. The job description, if I've done it, I put it on my CV as well. Yeah, then things to avoid the use of jargon. Some people will, in a bit to impress, will be using grammatical, like big grammars or using industry specific jargons on their CV. And they don't know that it's not, it's not their team, it's not the team leader that may pick it up. It may be an HR person that doesn't know jack about um, what you do and all. So be careful of the type of um, words, industry specific words or so this jargon is not necessarily nonsense. It basically just means be careful of the industry specific words that you use on your CV so that uh, it makes sense to whoever is picking it up. Then lies and inconsistent information. So people lie on their CV. So what people do is they take a CV, the CV of their friend, 
that makes sense or that is in the same department and they just change the name and the address and the personal information <laughs> and they just dump it and send it across and you go for the interview and they are saying oh you said that you did this between this and this how did you do it and they are embarrassing you or yourself some people put inconsistent information on their CV. They see they work in a place from January to July, and then they resume another rule from May to December. And they're like, how are you able to like, you have overlapping like dates on your CV. How are you able to like do that? Or, or those kind of things. So make sure that everything on your CV is clear, it's concise. Um, it's something that you can easily explain, that you can easily clarify. Um, like I really defend, right? It's not ambiguous, simple. It doesn't need to like be complex and and um, with God on your side. I'm sure you will get uh, you get whichever job you're applying for. And also applications and sending out CV the game of numbers. The more you send out, the more likely your chances of of getting a job. When I was leaving school, I started sending out my applications like. I think two months before I left school, I was just applying, sending out different, different, different applications. I did my first interview, a, probably two or three weeks after after I got home, so that I didn't get the job. They kicked me out. They said I've not done NYX. I was like, if I I traveled from Songwater to VI, I think I applied for the job via either Joberman or student, something like that. Travel from Songwater to VI, spent almost three hours on the road. Only to get to the interview, I presented my CV. It was a paper CV, then they asked us to bring up to print our CV. And the guy just looked at my personal information and said, Oh, you've not done NYC. I said, Yes. He said, Oh, no, it's what you could have done NYC. I was so bothered because should have, let me, but I've told you if I came all the way. And all, but because I was applying and applying to different roles before I, before I left school, I had an idea of what the CV should look like. And I kept updating my CV. What I do is, <laughs> When you do any significant thing where you are or at your place of work, like journalize it, put it in a journal, put it in a diary, so that when you're updating your CV, you can easily go back to it and you don't have to like start thinking that, oh, when did I do this? What have I done? And you just have a place where you've kept in all your achievements. It really helps you when you're preparing your CV. And like you start to almost like quantify them, um, don't just put um, that. That I that you effectively did this, that put oh, I did this, and because I did this, I was able to achieve a 15% increase in participation of students. Or we implemented this program and we were able to like reduce the cost of, of the project by 20%, all of that. Try and add the same page so that give an idea that you didn't just perform the tax, you actually achieved uh, results. All right, thank you very much um, for this session. If you have any questions. Um, this is the right time for us to talk about it. All right, thank you so much, sir. Can we celebrate? Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for for the presentation. Thank you so much, sir. It's it's really a lot. I learned a lot. All right. Um, do we have anyone that has a question? Just about to raise your hand. Okay, I think I'm seeing a question in the comment section. So um, there are a couple of questions here. So one, the first question says, okay, I guess you've answered the first question, which is how many pages should the CV look like? So the CV have. So the other question is, can you show us like an ask look of a written CV? Okay, that has been answered too. So, um, so the question is, when do you advise us to start sending out CVs? Like, when do you feel is the appropriate time that we can say, okay, I can start sending out CV? Okay, um, from 400 level, or even three, actually, I think from any level, people get internships in 200 level, 300 level, 400 level, and you can't get internship without having a CV that you send out. So I think, and I believe OAU is more stable now, what I mean is like you have um, breaks, like three month breaks or two month breaks. You don't just go on strike anyhow, right? So you can prepare your CV, you can have a CV then and you can start sending it out. Just easily to test the waters. If you send out your CV 50 times and nobody reach out to you, that's, uh, 
okay, we'll come for an interview or something. They tell me there's something wrong with your CV and you need to like talk to people so to see how they can help you or if you don't keep quiet, just send it across to your friends, to senior colleagues. Yeah, help me look at this CV. What do you think? You see me that you think is genge, you'll be surprised that it is very ordinary and and CV is not about you don't have to be the best student, you don't have to be the first class to have an outstanding CV. You may think you are not doing anything extraordinary, but when you talk to someone that knows that you do a good CV, you need to like pack it for you. I mean, we have time, I can show you the CV I had when I was in when I was in 400 level and my CV now, just a glimpse. And you see that. Please, we would love that you do that, sir. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. Let me let me try and do that. Let me share my screen again. So that people can see um the interface of a good CV. Okay. All right. So this is okay. So so this is my CV wow. when I was in for no, not when I was in four hundred level. When I just um left school. So okay, yeah, because this is July twenty seventeen to present. So I'm guessing this present is maybe November twenty seventeen. Also, so you can see this is a typical example of an Oracle CV <laughs> because um. You can see that the font, the spacing here is horrible. You can see that this does not align. You can see that here I'm putting month and year. I mean, yeah, month and year. And this place, I'm just, I didn't add the month. What else? My LinkedIn profile is not here. Okay, I even try it safe. I still put plus two, three, four. My, my, yeah, my email address was better. And <laughs> so I'm casting myself, but I believe you are brothers and sisters. So this, <laughs> yes. Right, so um, this was what I did in school. I was the general manager of Bureau of Management. This is basically called Bureau of Management, but I packaged it. So I called it Student Professional Bureau of Management. And I strategized with the CEO. I mean, if you're a recruiter and you see this kind of thing, I successfully organized and synergized, blah, blah, blah. It's a bad CV, like I say. This person here is horrible, but at least I tried. I tried to put some skills, excellent verbal written communication, this is in this. Oh, I put my leadership experience in in detail as well. I, I, like I say, no experience is against everything. Like everything comes um, and the extracurricular activities, and all this is just because I didn't have proper skills to um to put things. I just have to like mash it up, do put everything that I feel like makes sense and well. And this is um an overview of what my CV looks like now. So my name is here, my um, location, my phone number, my email, my LinkedIn, professional experience, my skills, some of my skills are here, my work experience is here, better aligned. Of course, I'll still update this, I'll still work on this, I'll still improve this, but I feel like this is, and it's, it's two pages, I squeezed everything to make it two pages, so that it doesn't exceed three pages. And so um, basically, yeah. So that's like the, the difference. And uh, okay, I think that's enough for now. Oh, I can see a question from Clement. I says, "What about person that just has the school certificate? How can such person write CV?" Your secondary school certificate, your, your secondary school, you can add um, the name of your secondary school, they appreciate as well. Of course, add that. If you add plenty A's and B's in your work, see like you have five A's and four B's, show that you're an intelligent student, you can add that. Um, I think that should be it. The rest should be what you did in the university. Secondary school is not really significant. So if you were a prefect in your secondary school, if you have like good work, like, Plenty is and is especially maybe the courses that relate to what you're doing, a in mathematics or a in accounting or something. It would also like be relevant or coming. Up. Hello, can anyone see me? Okay, sir. Yes, yes. Thank you very much for that. And uh, there is one more question from the comment section. The person said. For a professional like my mom, who is a nurse, 
can she add the project she has done so far in her education journey? And under which category should, should she add such information? Um, yeah, of course, if, if she has done a lot of um, projects that relates to what she's doing, can be part of her work experience, right? Work experience, um, you executed those projects that helped in what did you do in reducing um, the mortality rates, that you call it by 10% or by 15%. Or, so, yeah, it, it should be relevant. Or you can even have a section for, if, it's, if the projects are a lot, you can even have a section for projects, um, executed, or even achievements. Yeah, a recruiter advised me to even add achievements to my, like, as a separate category. The way you have experience, education, and stuff, if you have, like, significant achievements, if you're on the first class, four points, eight over five or 4.6, five over five, you add that. If you want a scholarship, you add that. If you did significant project that you feel like should be spotlighted, like should be brought to the front, you add that and all, all of that, like make up for what the situation is like. Please don't put your marital status on your CV. Like, nobody gives that information. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, sir. I can see one more question. The person said, is there a way to check, is there a way we can check if our CV would successfully pass the ATS? Yes, I believe so. Yes, I think there are um, softwares that, I don't know if they are free actually, but I've seen some softwares that um, help you to check how your CV would score on an applicant tracking system or an ATS, basically. But the best way to do that is just check the job. If you want to do it, just like you did copy, copy and paste, the recruiter, it will pass the ATS check, right? But when you get to the recruiter, the person that is going to go through it, they'll be like, this person just copied and pasted all the requirements of this job. When you put the skills, um, they are looking for someone that is good in Microsoft Word. Or yeah, that is good in Microsoft Word basic knowledge or good knowledge or so if i don't know a skill very well i just use basic knowledge or good knowledge so that they will not say okay I, like i just know something i can basically go to youtube and brush up my knowledge but if i know a skill very well i put proficient and i put advanced knowledge that kind of thing so if you don't know a skill very well and you see that it's part of the job but you're interested in learning it or you feel like you're going to learn it just look good knowledge of this skill or basic knowledge of this skill so the ATS probably we, we will read it that okay this is on this person's CV and to pass that check. Then when you get to the HR, you can after explain that oh I'm doing a training in this skill or in this course and um, or I know one or two things on this thing. I'm interested in this in this thing. But at least you pass that test. But if you don't add it because you don't know that skill, your CV will not even you won't even have the time to explain. It will get thrown out. It won't advance to the next stage okay thank you very much sir and there's one more question please guys if you have more questions please you can do well to notify me by raising up your hands okay what's the difference between packaging and line ah. how can we package without line <laughs> <laughs> wow there's a teen line <laughs> i guess i tried to put me on the spot here yeah, there's a teen line between packaging and line though. Ah. okay so packaging is you have some experience in it, or you can do it. For instance, packaging is me saying that, oh, um, um, my mom's shop or my mom's business, Sarah Catering Services. Yeah, of course, she was, she's a caterer. Well, she doesn't have catering services, but she's a caterer. And um, I helped her with some of the figures. Not like I carried Excel, I carried calculator with her. Okay, it will let value let for last year, how much how much did you make any company if you do it like this if you add this one when you sell to this one actually we you will reduce the cost now and you to increase profit all those kind of things i just found a way to like add it into the series so that if a recruiter asks me i know my mom's business i know how to talk about it and i just need to like find the professional way of polishing it to make sense right um um, packaging is people calling people that call tailors fashion designers. If you are a fashion designer, we are not calling them tailor. People that call um, some people call mechanic, mechanical engineers, some people call electrician, electrical engineers. It's they are not lying, they're just improving. Lying is 
you don't know this thing, you've never done this thing, you just know that this thing makes sense or this thing is relevant, I just want to force it into your seat and you can't talk about it, you can't explain, you'll be casted if the conversation gets to that point, you know. That's um, our trait line and that's not best. Okay, thank you very much for that explanation, sir. And we have a another question. So, so um, Stephen Ojo, please, you can unmute your mic and ask your question. All right, thank you, sir. Yeah, um, I thank thank you for the section. Um, the question I have is, under experience section, is it relevant to add your if you are remote, um, if you have experience in remote job? Is it, is it, I mean, is it okay for you to add your remote experience? Like maybe you're a freelancer and you have experience in writing content, copywriting an article or something related to that. Does that actually count in your CV? Um, well, if you have experience, if you work as a remote um, job, yeah, I think you can find a way to add it into your CV. Maybe like um, so. I have, I don't know like exactly the context. Maybe as a freelancer, but I've not worked as a freelancer before. Maybe you work with the company with remote. You can put them with the company, ABC company, in bracket, just put remote or something like that. Or maybe the role that you did, content developer, in bracket remote, because that could also communicate to the hiring manager to the recruiter that if this role is a remote role or an hybrid role. This person has some experience working as a remote worker, but not everyone can work remotely. Some people you ask them to work remotely, and you hear different things. You see, you don't have lights to the my data finished. The ask me to go and blend paper, or you be in you be in meeting and somebody will be shouting, go and turn the amala. You know all those kind of challenges that remote workers have. So it's it's if you have experience working remotely and it worked for you, you can just find it to it to just like. So clear at it. It's not a major thing. Most people work hybrid. Most people work. Um, I've been working hybrid and remotely since 2020. I've not had to like go to the office every day. Just find a way to like impute that, just bracket it, or just find a subtle way of just mentioning it so that they get it. Okay. Yeah, Stephen Ojo, I'm sure your question has been answered, right? So thank you very much for the amazing session, sir. Thanks for pointing out the do's and don'ts in writing a CV. You know, most people, well, let me say before, I actually thought adding that my gender was a little bit <laughs> needed in writing a CV. Now I know better. Thank you very much. So as many single people, we don't actually have to specify it on our CV, right? So thank you very much. We really appreciate having you in our midst today. So guys, I'm sure it was an amazing session and it would be right to express your gratitude by sending emojis, thank him in the comment section, send reactions, you know, allow him to know how this has helped you, how you've benefited from this. And definitely I would love to hear from you guys. So please type in the comment section how this session was great for you, how you saw things in a new light, Thank you very much. How oh, we didn't know we are single. Okay, they don't actually have to know we are single, right? <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it, sir. Thank you. Thank yeah, you so I I want to say thank you to my brother. Thank you for this session. And thank you for carving out time. Uh one thing that stood out in uh, when we are preparing for this boot camp is most of the people that we invited they are busy people you know, i told you that they are experienced in uh, in the skills that we want them to come and take and they are very uh, they are very busy and uh, one thing that we try to do is that god help us to do is we make sure that we fix a time that can accommodate everybody uh, because before we can find the time to slot mr samuel in <laughs> before we can find this time to slot even prof shitu in yesterday it was it was actually a time so i want to say thank you for uh 
carving our time to come and talk to us today. We appreciate it. We do not take it for granted. God bless you, sir. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for having me. I mean, it's a pleasure to be with everyone here. I'm a, I'm a BYF. I was a BYF like everyone here. And it's always um, a thing of joy to see my fellow brother and sister. Um, God, there are so many emojis. I don't understand what's going on. But thank you very much. <laughs> that should be the end for now. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. I really appreciate it. And guys, this brings us to the end of this morning session. I don't know if you're excited. Well, I'm excited. You know, it's not time to put into practice all that I've learned. So this is the end of this morning session. So thank you very much to all our speakers, starting from LinkedIn Optimization. Then we add um, Mr. Tokumbo, then now Mr. Samuel Ojo. So thank you very, very much. We really, really appreciate everyone. And yes, I'd like to give us a brief of, because we still have an evening session, right? So I'd like to give us a brief of what we'll be learning in the evening session. And definitely, please don't miss it for anything, please don't miss it for anything. It's starting by 4 p.m. And in that evening session, we will learn about tailoring our resumes for industries and roles. We will learn about interview preparations. Really, we need to know how to prepare for interviews, you know. The common questions will be asked, how to answer the questions, how to position yourself properly, how to express yourself the way you really want to express yourself. And definitely to be with the help of great speakers. I'm sure since the beginning of the bootcamp, we've been having amazing speakers, and this will be an exception too. So anticipate, get ready, come with your jotters and your pens. I will always say that. Come with your jotters and your pens. Be ready to learn, be ready to implement, be ready to, to put into practice all that you've learned. And I see God helping us in Jesus' name. Amen. So I hope to see you all at the evening session and thank you all for joining. So before we go, we'd like to share the grace and we'll call Mr. Olua Shion Stephas to share the grace and the closing prayer. Welcome, sir. All right. Once again, I want to say thank you for everyone for coming. And uh, it is not only about just learning all this. It is also about making use of it. What's the purpose of, uh, like what the second speaker said, for you to be a knowledgeable broke man? You, <laughs> you should not be a knowledgeable broke man. Let's, uh, let's, let's what we have learned let's try to make use of it let's go out there and apply it they works that's why we are organizing it yeah the knowledge works so please let's make use of it so let us pray father we bless you for this service uh, this session we thank you for how you have helped us we thank you because out of uh the knowledge of the people that you have blessed that you have bring this to us we thank you for your speakers Thank you for how you are helping them. We thank you because every speaker uh, try as much as possible to even tailor this knowledge uh, in your way, in the kingdom way, in the Christian way. We want to say bless you for their lives. We want to say thank you for also everybody that uh, is present here today. We say blessed be the name in the name of Jesus. And daddy, we have learned. You know, we pray, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit, which is the teacher of the world, will teach us more beyond what our speakers have even told us today in the name of Jesus. And that day we want the grace that we'll be able to apply this in whatsoever field, whatsoever career that we have in the mighty name of Jesus. And that day we want to say that as we be continuing this boot camp, we have come to the half of the whole bootcamp we have two more sessions to go that your will help us in the name of jesus uh, your knowledge your wisdom your understanding oh lord we pray oh god that uh to abide with us in the name of jesus and it teach us to understand and it adds to our knowledge and you give us wisdom for we to be able to apply the knowledge in the name of jesus thank you father blessed be the holy name our speakers that has blessed us today, we pray, God, that you bless them abundantly in the name of Jesus. Uh, 
because they are here, oh God, you cause a transformation in their lives in the name of Jesus. They have poured out their mind and themselves to us. We pray, oh God, that you pour out yourself also on them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be thou, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining this morning. So we'll see you all again by 4 p.m. Try not to be late. Thank you very much.